I had a, a virus called H. pylori, which you get from eating ass. Okay. Do you okay. eat random ass on the road? I was. When I, when I was single, I was really that. put a napkin in the shirt and had a fork and a knife. Yeah. And I would really yeah. go full Rottweiler. Yeah. But um, Fresh from the show? Did you yeah. let them go home and, and wash up? No, no wash. You got to let them sit in the hotel bath with hot water. Let them bake a bit. Uh, that's let them not boil bad. under there, and then, then you're good to go. Sometimes you want a little, oh, yeah. a little crust. Of course. You know? It's little, like cooking in the same pan. A little it's got seasoning. Some flavor, little, yeah. yeah. Uh, I never wanted crust in my life. Never. <laughs> the second batch of bacon you make with the grease that's already there is always better. Yes. Yeah. Poo-poo platter. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no worry at night. Welcome to a new episode of the new Rory and Maul podcast. I am Maul. I'm Rory. And today we are joined by a very interesting guest. You may have seen him in countless box office smashes, mm. uh, plenty was, of YouTube videos. He was just giving you the uh, Black Power Fist for Black oh, History Month. That's what that yeah. felt like. Yeah, That's yeah. What it was. Uh, you, feel, joined, you feel seen? I feel seen. Okay. I love this guy right here. Uh, we are joined with... Uh, the talented, the funny Mark Norman. How you doing, Mark? Hey, hey, comedy. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Nice digs. Well, we just happened to be in Brooklyn, and uh, you know, we was like, listen, let's just gentrify the whole thing. Uh, so we caught Mark. <laughs> let's finish it off. Yeah, let's just let's just go ahead and gentrify the whole Brooklyn today. Yeah. Uh, so we Chipotle couldn't do it. We'll do no, it. We'll do <laughs> it. Us, us and Mark today. How you feeling? Good, man. I used to live in Brooklyn. I uh, I used to live in Crown Heights, and mm-hmm. I lived on the black side. Oh, okay. Because okay. it's black and Jew. Yes. And uh, Eastern Parkway uh, splits it. Yeah, and I'm neither. So mm. I, was a, I was a goy without a country. Yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't pretty. Like, a lot of black guys would be like, you're on the wrong side. Mm. Then I'd go on the Jewish side, and they were like, are you Jewish? I was like, no. And they would yeah. speed off. <laughs> Good times. I mean, I guess going the side of Jesus. There you go. you felt better. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a more, I'm a Muslim. But uh, I can see it. Bismillah. Yes. Yeah. Although I am circumcised. So we are. <laughs> are Muslims not circumcised? I think. Uh, not, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't no. counted. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I haven't asked unexpected. enough Muslim men. Call just, in. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know if you're uh, circumcised. Yeah. What uh, Do you have any towers. favorite? Uh, <laughs> don't cut the towers. That uh, happened already. Yeah. They already cut. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite memories besides 9-11 of living in Crown Heights? I got mugged thrice. <laughs> okay. okay. One was in Hell's Kitchen, one was in Crown Heights, and one was in Canarsie. Okay. So I kind of feel like that's your fault. All, Just all, name all three, my fault. three robbable neighborhoods. Yeah. What well, were you doing in Canarsie? I fell asleep on the L train. Oh, that, 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 last see, Mark, that's what happens when you fall asleep on a train. My you fault. get mugged. Mm. Take full responsibility. I woke up. There was a guy doing the exacto knife on the pockets, like around all the, yeah. the phones and everything. Yeah. And I woke up and I jumped up and I hit my head on the pole. Okay. And I fell right back down. And this guy didn't even blink. He was like, "Don't worry, the train will turn right back around. You're good." <laughs> and then he left. And I, I like, love, I love that the robber gave you reassurance and he, safety. He made you feel warm. He yeah. was charming. Mm. He was very likable. And then the other time, how about this? Crown Heights. My my stop was you know didn't it didn't stop there uh-huh. so it kept going I get off like three stops past mine I see a bunch of guys on the corner shooting dice mm. like out of a movie forties the whole thing and I was like let me cross the street I'm walking down this guy with a big beard goes give me it was a it was probably like 2009 I had an mm. iPod and he goes give me that radio and i was yeah. so drunk i was like it's not a radio yeah, yeah. and he look at what you focused on instead yeah yeah <laughs> i wasn't worried at all it helped that i was drunk because i wasn't that scared but he grabbed the uh the, the cord and so i started grabbing it and he picked me up and mm. you know what a business closes they've had that metal gate yeah going to, he just slammed me against that like five times and i was like a rag doll oh, and yeah. then those five took guys five with the guy the the dice ran over and beat the shit out of him those five guys actually went on to open a store called The Five Guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know that or not. So you inspired that. Yeah. You. Do you think maybe he discovered any new music he hadn't heard yet? Like, oh, this guy, <laughs> you know, he has good taste. I hope he likes Billy Joel. <laughs> but, um... Give me that radio when you see an iPod. Because you didn't know what that was, right? He's like, hey, just give me that. Whatever yeah. it is, give it to me. Right. But and I was like, oh, what an idiot. This imagine guy's... robbing someone, putting the headphones in, and Piano Man's playing. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I talked to a cop later and he said that those guys might have been drug dealers and they can't have a white kid getting tuned up in a neighborhood. So they made yeah, the choice to fuck business. the other guy up. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, street justice. Keep so, things balanced. So you moved to New York when? I love the cops did, said that instead of arresting the drug dealers. Yeah, I know, no, right? No. There's never arrested <laughs> They're drug committing dealers. crimes. Yeah. Well, they You're were beating up a guy in uh, St. Louis. But yeah. Um, was it St. Louis? Tennessee that up i mean it's happening across the country. there you go i'm sure it's happening in st louis um so where are you from originally new orleans oh born and raised 
Where were you August of 2005? Ah, uh, Katrina. Yeah, I was in Baton Rouge. I was at LSU. Mm, okay. Coincidence? About an hour away. No, mm. no, I just uh, didn't live there. But uh, my parents had to come move in with me and my jerk off buddies. I used to tell house. girls that too. What's that? I used to tell girls that too that my mom was <laughs> staying with me. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty brutal. It was a rough time, but uh, we did all right. So you just skipped, <laughs> just skipped Katrina. Wow, well, it was a rough, so, it was a rough time about Katrina. Is hilarious. It was a rough time. I don't think he was talking about Katrina. I think he was talking about his parents living with oh, that. Okay. Yeah, I was talking about that. Okay. Okay. We're trying to get laid. Katrina like, was yeah, nothing. No, no, you can no. handle Katrina. No, the levees the breaking. Yeah, is nothing. That was nothing. The parents moving yeah, in yeah. is like this is no, too much. It was the yeah. cock blocking. That yeah. was the real yeah, yeah. problem. I get it. We're trying to it. play beer pong mm. and you know. Trying to play beer pong while your mom is asleep is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Put a towel on the ground. <laughs> and then my friends are hitting on my mom. It was a whole thing. Oh, my God. And they were looting. I know. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. That's what you <laughs> want to call it. But, uh, yeah, it got it got wild. But, yeah, Katrina, you know, we got through it. When did you move to New York? Did you move to New York as a result of Katrina? or No, but I think maybe subconsciously, like, the city was fucked. I wanted to be a comedian. There's uh-huh. no comedy in New Orleans, so I moved here. There's no comedy in New Orleans. Really? Not really. There's like a maybe a bar show or two. Okay. Mm-hmm. No club. And uh, you think Bourbon Street is like flooded with comedy bars? No. People they don't want to hear about it. Our takes. They want to see tits. Yeah. yeah. You want to see tits and music and drink. Okay. Got so, it. So comedy just ensues on Bourbon Street. Yeah. Without comedians. Yeah. More or less. Just, right. Just, just look outside. Good point. And everybody in New Orleans thinks they're funny, so they're not going to come to a show. Mm, they're right. going to heckle you if anything. What uh What made you make the move to New York? Not the reason, but was it the parents in there, beer pong? Figured you'd have a, a better shot up here? I was just such a rudderless loser, and I had nothing going on, so I figured I might as well take a shot at comedy, mm. which I knew was a huge risk, but I was like, eh, it's better than this. Yeah. So I moved to New York, became a janitor during the day, and I would do comedy at night. Where were uh, you a janitor at? Uh, Midtown at a, like a high-rise okay. hedge fund place. So I was mopping floors and writing jokes in my head. Mm. That's interesting. Good times. Great job. You know, everybody's like, oh, janitor. Yeah. But yeah, no one no one fucks with you. This sounds like the plot to Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> yeah, I was Great in the movie. back room with a big except except for math equations, it was just dick jokes. <laughs> were, were you more of like a Lysol guy? What what was your some of your favorite products as a janitor? Mm, well, the Lysol wasn't bad because you could huff it. Mm-hmm. But uh nah, more of a mopping, you know, clean out the fridge, shit like yeah. that. Left, left to right, front to back. What, what was more your style? Oh, jeez, uh, I'm more of a Circular power motion. bottom. Uh, <laughs> power bottom, shit. <laughs> power bottom is crazy. Uh, I, good I gig. assume uh, diversity of people in, in your coworkers in the cleaning service. Yeah, I mean, I was the the uh, token honky, oh. but it was uh, there was the Dominican guy, the black guy, the uh, Hispanic lady, the Hungarian weirdo. Uh-huh. Uh, but then all the rest was just like hedge fund, yeah, hedge fund whitey. Still in touch with your coworkers? No, they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't uh, get the two-drink minimum at the club? No, to, to no. Fill in? Like three of them didn't speak English. I, showed, mm. I had to show one of them how to use an ATM. It was crazy. But uh, we, we, were, all, we, we, were, we got along really well. Mm. But I think that was the fourth time you were robbed. <laughs> they, they taught you in. Yeah, that guy found me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stealing your debit card. Uh, what, was the, what was the first set like in New York? Ooh, a bomb for years. I'm mm. two straight years of bombing because, uh, you know, I was a southern bumpkin. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, yeah, just ate shit. I was barking. You know about you know mm-hmm. about barking? Of course. Yeah, that was hell. What is barking? That's where you're out on the sidewalk going, "Hey, comedy show, come on in. Oh, we okay. got Dave yeah. Chappelle." Okay. And you're just lying. Okay. Yeah. Just to get people in the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you bark them in, and then they sit down, and you run on stage and you go, "Hey, what's the deal with Uber?" Yeah. You know. Mm. So <laughs> yeah. it was a rough, rough time. I don't know if I could do it again. Who uh, who were in the clubs like notable comedians at that time? Um, a lot of a lot of fun people. Like you'd see, I don't know how, how well, and you know, you'd see like a, like a Dan Soder or mm. a Sam Morrill or a, um, a lot of guys went off to L.A. started writing and stuff. You'd see Jermaine Fowler, who's like now in Eddie Murphy movies and stuff. Yeah. It was uh, well, everyone's Michael in the Eddie Murphy movies now. That's true, you people, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Michael Che was always around. So yeah, it was a it was a good group. Mm. Fun uh, times. What's the difference with specifically with podcasting and let's even just say success with New York comedians now and LA comedians? Well, I think New York comedians tend to try to be funny. 
No. <laughs> um, I think I think New York comedians are about being good comics, and a lot of L.A. comedians tend to be more about making it. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, making it comes as a result of trying to be a good comic, you know, instead of just like chasing that sitcom or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are good comics in L.A., but most of them start in New York. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I feel it's even a connection with the music business now. Everyone left New York and moved to L.A., to Atlanta, to other places. New York kind of feels dead in the arts as far as behind yeah. the scenes to some degree. Bummer, I've noticed huh? that with comedy, too. I feel like the comedians I love that were at the cellar moved to Austin or to L.A., yeah. and they're not really around like that. Yeah, but that's the thing about New York. Like People always say, New York's dead, but New York doesn't care that it's dead. Mm. And I think that's why what makes New York New York. So I think they'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> New York doesn't care that it's dead. Exactly. Like that's well, you you think we're dead, but we'll we'll just keep going. Yeah. And then Eric Adams thinks back. otherwise, buddy. <laughs> He's well, doing great. Uh, would you make the Austin move ever? No, a flash in the pan. Mm. I you mean, would... look, Austin's a great city, but it's there's a ceiling. Mm. You know, um, I'll go down and do like a Rogan or a Segura's pod or something. But uh, and it's fun to visit. It's like ice cream. You can't have it every day. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right. Get it. That was a good one. Um, Thank you. Sorry, pussy. You know, comedy. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> how was the... Uh, Say something bad about Rogan. How was... <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about Rogan? Well, here's the thing about Rogan. He's like a super sweet, generous guy, but the media really does him dirty. Uh, and like, he can fight, so it's tough to and say he can fight, yeah, but Kick your ass. Yeah. I think anybody who hangs out with him would say, or who has hung out with him, would say like, oh, he's a nice guy. But if you don't know him, he's painted as this kind of meathead weirdo whatever but like in person he's a nice guy i think that's one of the problems with the internet yeah. the internet can just brand a person a certain way yeah. and like sh smear a guy or a mm -hmm. gal but you know you're in the same room with a guy even an enemy it tends to yeah be better yeah i get that I don't um, know, does that help a little bit <laughs> no uh, i was actually i, think that I, you feel, like shit I, know, him, I but... feel like i know everything about rogan now thank you <laughs> <laughs> he likes meat and uh he's yeah. an asshole and he, he loves meat, um, loves aliens <laughs> yeah but and do you, comedy. Do you think he kind of shaped the podcast world for comedy? Uh, Outside of, one could say with his Spotify deal, he shaped most of mainstream podcasting, period. At least put a price on it. Right. But he was early. I remember when he was doing stuff on his couch from his crib. Yeah, he did it from the ground up. And uh, it's a weird thing because you wouldn't predict that he would be the one to blow up. But yeah. it just happened but it did take you know 12 years or so mm -hmm. so yeah but the thing about that la scene was they had like theo segura ari all these um podcasts and they all helped each other yeah and then they all kind of branched off and did their own thing but now they have huge audiences mm. the crossover that's good you know it's like when you see a rap video featuring whatever and you're like who's this guy mm. and then you check him out and then now you're off off and running. So Rogan is pretty much the DJ Khaled of uh, comedy, yes. is, what, is, which is what you were just saying. <laughs> Except <laughs> verbatim. He eats pussy. <laughs> but yeah. Does, well, does Khaled not eat pussy? No, he doesn't. Is that a fact? Yeah. Is it he, a he's Muslim gone on thing? Record. <laughs> he's gone on record saying he doesn't eat pussy. Is it a Muslim thing? Uh, Why would Khaled go on record saying it? Like yeah, during like one of his you, records how when many he was saying, have we to are, ask you, yo, do you eat pussy for you to be like, yo, listen, all right, I'm gonna answer this one time for everybody. Was I it not on the Breakfast pussy. Club? Yeah, it was on the Breakfast there Club. There you go. Because yeah. all he does is say really positive things. I don't know where he would slip in. Yeah, like, but hey, we don't by the way, I pussy. don't eat pussy, but yeah. you know, peace and blessings. I'm inspired. Like, God, God is everything. Just don't put your mouth on that. <laughs> <laughs> Book of Khaled. Khalid, I'm sorry. Khalid. Um, so you have. um. You have a special out, it uh, came out a few years ago, Out to Lunch. Yeah. Uh, Julian made sure that I watched it. Oh, jeez, sorry. I, I loved it. No, no, no. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, thanks, I, I man. loved it. Appreciate um, it. The one thing that I, Julian pointed out that was really unique about it is you told so many jokes in less than an hour. Uh-huh. Do you typically write like that, or is, or is that just like you go off the audience, like, this is what I'm feeling, I'm just going to give a bunch of quick hitters tonight? Good question. Well, uh, I'm just a coward. Mm -hmm. And I can't handle the silence. Mm -hmm. So if they're not uh, laughing, I'm I'm panicking. Okay. Yeah. So I have to keep saying punchlines just to calm yeah. myself down. Okay. So it's actually a... Uh, Is that a technique that a lot of comedians do? Maybe, maybe. But I think I'm more scared. I, I am still scared to go on stage. Even really? after like 17 years or whatever of doing this. So like, I have to get laughs or else I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. So that's why I write all these punchlines. Well, how'd you deal with the three years of bombing then? It was hell. A lot of alcohol. <laughs> Get, getting robbed. Yeah, I didn't sleep. Yeah. I mean, those were rough, rough days. Well, you slept on the L train. Yeah, yeah there you go. There you go. You <laughs> yeah, the, the booze helped. Yeah. Well, what do you think the breakthrough was 
after those three years where you started to get comfortable and you know what's weird is I would bomb so much and one time I told a joke and a guy heckled me and I just snapped on this guy. Like all mm. those years of bombing just compounded up to this one moment and I went off on the guy and that was killing. He was mm -hmm. black. Yeah, yeah. I so, shot him. so it was trauma and, and uh, PTSD. I guess so. Mm -hmm. And I went off on this guy and then Michael Richards stole my whole act. No, I went off on this guy, and uh, that was killing. So I was like, oh, because I was doing the whole, like, what's the deal with tables? Yeah, I was yeah. trying to do an impression of a comedian, yeah. and they could see right through it. Well, that's why Kramer York. took your act, because yeah. you took Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I learned, like, oh, you got to just be you. You got to just mm, yeah. relax and not try so hard to be this this com comedian. Yeah. And that's when it kind of flipped. Okay. Did you put more personal life stuff at that point? No, I don't want. I, I don't have anything about me. Why is that? I just don't find me interesting. Why at all? Eh. It has to be some interest. You look, you from New Orleans. You, You've been you robbed. to New York. Uh, you escaped Katrina. Yeah, bad weather. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a great. Day? That sounds like a great trailer to a Netflix special. Yeah, huge dick. You know, I got yeah. all these things, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I just you, you write what you find interesting. I find peop other people. You know. Society, race, gay, men, women, all that stuff, I think is way more interesting than me. Mm. And I think, who cares about me? Let's talk about everything we're all going through. Yeah, I get that. So what about the gays, really? Do you well, find interesting? I can't reproduce. <laughs> yeah. Which is a shame, because they're, they're fun. Yeah, they look like they'd be great parents. Yeah. Well, you know, you Jews are always like, we got to keep the Jewish bloodline going. But yeah. gays are like... Mm. We don't have to worry about that. They just keep coming out. Yeah. Well, that was Eddie Murphy's problem <laughs> in You People. What's yeah. that? That very thing of the Jews trying to keep their bloodline going. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he's not a fan. I didn't Did see it. You didn't see You People? No. Okay. I gotta, I, I gotta watch more movies. Mm. Is that because you hate Andrew Schultz and he was part of it? And <laughs> I heard he had the best line in the whole movie. Oh yeah, he said he stormed the Capitol, uh, <laughs> which is like you know. Do you, hate, that. do you hate Schultz? No, no. You ever met him? Yeah, I know him well. I've done his podcast. Okay. Great guy, funny guy. Cool He's guy. killing it. Cool guy. I was just joking. I guess I'm just like, I feel like all comedians kind of hate each other. I think there's a lot of similarities between rappers and comedians as far as that community. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think it's great that they help each other with the podcasting and all that thing. But I think comedians by nature are probably shady people because they're hilarious. Well, definitely selfish. We're definitely yeah. self-absorbed. But I think... It is there. There's some truth to that for sure. There's a lot of feuds out there, and we're all big personalities. So there's a lot of clashing. Mm -hmm. But I do think starting as a comedian is so rough that you kind of it's almost like a military. We're in the trenches together, bond. Yeah. So a lot of us who came up together are really bonded. And then it's there's so you go through so much alone as a comedian. You travel alone. You mm -hmm. write jokes alone. You bomb alone. You perform alone. So when you have another comedian around, you're like, yeah, yeah. I need you, buddy. Mm -hmm. So there is that. But there's, you're right. There's definitely some beefs. How do you feel about Saturday Night Live? Because we was talking about it, and I was—I'm not the biggest fan of SNL. I think they have like certain guests on at times that are funny, uh, but overall, it seems it's not. I don't understand how it's such a template of like comedians and what they strive to like. If right. I can get on SNL, if I can write for SNL, like I've made it. I just am not the biggest SNL fan. I'm with you. I think. Uh it's a time capsule. Like I think everybody when they're 22 loves SNL. Mm -hmm. I loved Adam Sandler and Will Ferrell and all those guys on there. But like I'm 39. It's just not for me. Yeah. It's yeah. hip. It's young. It's very political now, which it mm -hmm. used to not be. It used to be more f silly. And I think now it's kind of pushing a, an agenda a little more, which mm -hmm. is a bummer. Like we just make fun of everything. Right. You know, so I'm, I'm with you. I'm not a huge fan. Like, that's not to say they don't come out with some bangers every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you watch it on YouTube, you're like, all right, I got that five minute sketch, I'm good. Yeah. But I couldn't watch a whole episode. Yeah, no. I feel like the internet kind of killed SNL mm. in the degree that we don't need censorship anymore. If I find right. crude things funny, I can go on the internet and I can find someone that will make me laugh that way. Mm -hmm. They're good on point. fucking NBC. Yeah. So when you have someone like Kate McKinnon, who I think is hilarious Brilliant. and a legend, feel like, and even Michael Che, we talk about his mm -hmm. stand up compared to SNL is drastically different. His stand up yeah, is hilarious. So. His, the Michael Che show on yeah. HBO is fucking hilarious. I love it, yeah. But you get in this NBC box and it's like you can't really succeed in this era. I agree. And then you see shit on TikTok. You're like, this is better than anything I've yeah. ever seen on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whereas I think SNL was for the younger audience, now I think my mom is the 
audience for SNL. Really? She, yeah, because she grew up on SNL, so mm. she sticks with it. Ah. Uh. And she's not on the internet the way I am. I don't need to watch SNL. I'll catch, again, a funny one on YouTube that makes it through sure. whatever. But I think it's for the older audience now, to be honest. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I think it's the people that grew up on Belushi, Sandler, uh, all them are the only ones that stuck with it because it's an institution to them. I just feel like it's Pete Davidson fans now a lot. Well, <laughs> which is, is he still young. on SNL? I assume I he know. makes a cameo like once a month. Oh, okay. like, whoa. Right. What a career, man. Yeah. Oh. He was just at um the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I saw that. He I saw shaved that. head. He looked like he just left Auschwitz. At the Pro Bowl? <laughs> yeah. Who goes to the fucking Pro Bowl? Pete Davidson. Yeah, I'm sure Pete it's Davidson. a good paycheck. Was it, was it just Pete was at the Pro Bowl? He was like presenting was just some Pete? award. It was just, yeah, it was him. Oh, he was working. <laughs> he, well, he's not working. They, they, just put him on the field. they put him on a field in a big hoodie and handed him a trophy to pass to someone. That's a lot of work. Well, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> I'm just saying he wasn't there just to watch. He didn't like take a trip to the Pro Bowl. Like, hey, I'm going to watch. No, the Pro Bowl. no, he's not. Because like, who does that? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody goes to the Pro Bowl. Who I picked sh- Pete Davidson <laughs> to give an award at the Pro Bowl? Yeah, like, You're not asking the right questions. He's very popular. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is that? I just want to smell his dick. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> Mark. Please. You don't think he washes? Well, even if he does, I get a hint of some Kardashian or mm. uh, Ariana, uh, Ariana or uh, Emirata, whatever. Yeah, Radikowski. The- <laughs> They're just friends. Oh, sorry. That's what the post told me. <laughs> um, Gillis talking about SNL. I feel like his sketch, the Gillian Keeves, was, would have been a great, as a writer, he would have been a great addition. And obviously that got derailed. But Yeah, but SNL couldn't have half of those sketches. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, NBC. Yeah. NBC, would, that half of that is shit is over the, over the line, um, you know, practice and standards wise. Very is, offensive. Because uh, I feel like, and I, again, could be wrong, outside looking in, a lot of the... Comedy journey was stand up, get a sitcom, and that was your way of yeah. what, what's the stereotypical path now? Because again, it's not even SNL. Is it stand up, get on Rogan? Hopefully, Burt Kreischer will eat food with me. And like, then what's what is the the it's, standard way of doing it? I know it's all different, but it's, yeah, there's no standard anymore. You can still do that route, mm-hmm. you know, like Michael Che got a HBO show, Sam yeah. Jay got an HBO show. So there, there is that route, but you could also go the YouTube, the Social media, the get on hot ones, you know, yeah. there's all it's so splintered now. So there's all kinds of different avenues and you don't need the gatekeepers anymore. You can still use the gatekeepers, but I thought you said gatekeepers. I'm sorry, gatekeepers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. Gatekeeper. I'm picturing a guy in a beekeeper outfit just holding back a bunch of <laughs> holding back Billy Eichner. A bunch of gays. <laughs> yeah. Um whoa. Relax, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh the gatekeepers. Uh on, on Fox. Yeah. <laughs> on Fox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely there's now there's more avenues, and that's why comedy's better than it's ever been. I mean, there's mm. so many comics, and there's so many brands of comedy. There's so many different styles. You got Nanette, then you got Schultz, mm. then you got Pete Davidson, then you got Mulaney, then you got Louis, then you got uh, Rocks coming out with a new one. So it's a little everything. Everybody mm. can find their person. And do you think touring makes that easier? Because you, I feel. Comedy tours are bigger than they've ever been. Huge. Where you may not need the network show to pay your rent. You definitely don't need <laughs> the shows. And the shows hold you back. Like uh I was talking to Chris DeStefano, funny comic. Love and Chris. he got some hosting gig for like some true TV show. And he said he was losing money hosting this show because he couldn't do his podcast. Yeah. Mm. And that's that's the new world order. Yeah. So it's a different time and it's a it's a great time. I mean, look at you guys. You got fucking seven cameras up in this uh pedophile den yeah. you're in, and uh this is it. This yeah. is entertainment. This, this is, is def- this, <laughs> this is the waiting room to Epstein Island. Yeah. This, this, is, this is the screening the yeah. Delta Lounge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the gate to get uh, to the plane. <laughs> There's a playground out back. <laughs> so how is it, it for uh comedians in New York City like dating? Like, do comedians, do comics get a lot of pussy? Do y'all, do y'all get Besides like, Pete. Like, oh, yeah. Of course, Pete. Like, do y'all, yeah. like, because the comedy clubs are like more of a date type of thing. Mm. So I don't I don't know if a lot of single women go to comedy nah, clubs, do they? They're around, they're around, and then on the road as well. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty good for getting laid. I'm, I'm a married queef. Yeah. But uh, in my single days, I was really tearing up some yeah. gash. Yeah. <laughs> I had a great run. I had a great run, and uh, you know, tearing I think up gash is just fucking hilarious. Can we put that on the hoodie? <laughs> yeah, you tear up some gash. Put that on a fucking hoodie, man. Well, I think for ladies, uh, they like a, a funny guy. They like a guy who's on stage, and uh, they they know you're not a murderer, probably because yeah. you know 
It's basically like a, a Tinder bio. I, I heard Ted said. Bundy was very charming. That's we true. Don't know I that. heard that too. Yeah. But uh, he got he, got, he tore up some gas. Oh, he, yeah, he, he, oh, he definitely tore up some gas. He was the Pete Davidson of his era. That's yeah. think true. about it. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> How many times have you almost got your ass kicked and you had to like tell jokes to get out of it? Like, oh he, man, is that like one of your like? My whole childhood. Yeah. 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 Didn't work in Canarsie. You yeah, know. No, no. I didn't have enough time. But, hey, funny uh, man, give me your iPod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to public school. It was it was a little dicey. Uh, How so? Well, you know, I, I couldn't fight and I wasn't good at sports, so I had to do something. Mm. So you make a crack about the, the tough guy and then he comes up to you and then you got you to gotta think quick. Yeah. And then, you know, pretend to blow him or something and then you get out of it. Um. <laughs> Most interesting girl you met on the road while you were uh, oh, cr- crush, crushing these boxes. Jeez Louise. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd, I'd fucked Amanda Knox. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, we, all, no. we all know Amanda. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, jeez. Oh, craziest gal on the road. I don't know. I've had a lot of a lot of fun, wild times. I had sex with my uh, teacher in college. Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was fun. Well, uh, what was the age difference? I was probably 23 or 22, and she was... 45. Do you oh. feel like she misused her power and put you in a position where you had to 100% have sex with her? I got an A in the class, but I gave her the D. Yeah. But uh no. Uh, yeah, she definitely she was definitely using me as a uh sex toy and I was fine with it. Mm-hmm. Uh great time. Were you, <laughs> you were wrapping up on the road or do you, you got to wrap it up. No see this diggity. is what I, see, sometimes Mark, you don't though. This is what I tell these That's guys. That's true. <laughs> There's a lot of ladies out there going to Take it off. Just yeah. take it off. Oh, like, no. Oh, jeez. That scares me. Oh, yeah. That's very popular. If a girl tells you to take it off, yeah. I'm scared. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm turned on. No, man. You can't. You just... <laughs> that means she trusts me and she never does she this. She sees you for who you are? Yeah. She never does she that. She wants to feel you. She wants to. It's the first time for her. Okay. But She's never done anything like no, this. No, no, no. Yeah. At all. If you're Drake, though, you got to bring the hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Drake I don't. That, yeah, that wasn't bull. That first of all, Drake is not using condoms. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Drake, he's don't kosher. Come on, condoms. he wouldn't do that. <laughs> but if he gets a gal pregnant, that's that's um, he's fucked. That's yeah, right. This tax write off. Ah, all right. Is Drake. that what you call an abortion? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not to see with abortions, you can only write that off once because it's yeah. an expense one time. Yeah. A uh, child keeps going. Good so, point. Good point. Yeah. I didn't know you were Jewish. Yeah. Three yeah. percent. <laughs> I did my twenty-three and me. <laughs> And as uh, my aunt said, that's your mother's side. <laughs> um, <laughs> so no, no great. Uh, <laughs> this feels bad. Yeah, <laughs> we're having fun. Oh, There's Jewish. women here, so it feels like it's so loud. Yes, oh okay. no, they're they're more problematic than we are. Oh, all uh, right. So, you, of course, you have your beautiful wife now. Sure. You don't know what she looks like. Sorry, that's just a thing that's that like, guys say. Nice She's in a yeah. wheelchair, so she appreciates that. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's sensitive times, so yeah. regardless. Yeah, yeah, and but don't don't uh, assume her pronouns either. That I apologize. Thank Are you. you okay? I apologize. That, I'll that let it wrong. go. Um, when when did you decide it was it was over for crushing pussy? Well, yeah, how does a know, comic get out of like the single life? Because that has to be tough. Like, when did you stop cheating? <laughs> it's it's tough because <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of emotions get involved, and you know, as a guy on the road, you you pop into Pittsburgh and you might plow a nice uh, yeah. plump lady, and mm. then you leave, and she's like, "That's it," and you're yeah. like, "I don't live there." Yeah, look at like, <laughs> yeah. look at my show dates. Yeah, I'm in yeah. Philly tonight. I'll yeah, just yeah. send her my tour yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, my schedule, and they're like, "What? Well, we had sex," and you're like, mm-hmm. "I know." And she's yeah. like, "But I had sex with you." I'm like, "But I had sex with you." Right. Yeah, I don't get this weird. I thought what, equality, mm-hmm. you know, like why? That's what I thought equality. Yeah, why do you get to get mad at me? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it was uh, just a fun. <laughs> the acoustics in here are great. Consensual romp. Mm. Um, Still but, in touch with a Pittsburgh girl? No, no, she. Mm-hmm. Yo, you see how white boys can just like look past shit like that and just keep having conversation? I can't look past that. You can do it, <laughs> like Mark. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Mark, try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Fart, Mike. We're all oh, friends it's here. A vegan fart. Yo, you know that, his half. Oh, I don't want a vegan fart. Vegan all farts are fucking probably bok choy and broccoli. Yo, <laughs> tofu fart. Rory went right into the next. Like yeah, so like you know when you want to roll, bro. Yeah. No, this man just farted on the mic. Bro. I was still I'm <laughs> very concerned about the woman in Pittsburgh that got her heart broken. <laughs> Rory's gonna match his fart. Oh my god! By the end of this pod, we're all farting once. Absolutely. But, all right. Uh, so, so when you're out to lunch show, you said you was talking about how women don't. Fart in front of like guys. Yeah, usually. Do you remember when your wife first farted in yes. front of you? Yes. Yeah, that was the first time I hit her. No. <laughs> uh, 
no, I, I do remember it. I was like, oh shit, we are well, we're I getting mean, close, you know. you know, we're we're getting real chummy. <laughs> I wait, think farting wait. for a woman is like crying. Wait, hitting for a her man. was when you guys were getting too chummy, or the fart? The fart. The fart. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, not hitting her. Because yeah. you had hit her before that. Yeah, right? well, <laughs> she had an abusive father. It was, you know, yeah. it runs in the family. Was, yeah. But uh, was her kinks? We can't kink shame. Yeah, she likes a black guy. <laughs> um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> oh, the farting. Yeah, I think for a, yes. farting for a woman, it's it's. It's tough because a lot of women hide it. So when mm. a woman farts, you're like, oh, she's close. We're yeah. close. Yeah. It's like crying for a guy. If a guy cries in front of a woman, it's like, oh, shit. Mm. Yeah. This guy really is comfortable around me. What about if a guy cries in front of a guy? That's tough. Yeah. Because like, what do you do? You get him a beer? Nah, I think you get a get an Uber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you get for out of sure. there. That's too much crying on TV, by the way. My yeah. my lady watches all this 90 Day Fiance horse shit. Love that show. Every 10 seconds, a person's like, and I just don't know. This guy left me in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know? So Because you wouldn't give her a visa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy left me in Pittsburgh. I mean, what do you expect from the 90 Day Fiance cast? I guess. Cry- crying would probably be the next step after uh, flying from a third world country That's to, a good to point. Pittsburgh. Good point. Within 90 days. But it's Bachelor, it's Bachelorette, it's Love Island, it's all crime. It's a whole mm. bunch of bullshit. Yeah, and, you know, I like to jerk off to it, but... Yeah. Uh, it's, Naturally, with a, it's a, with little a belt around your neck. Yeah. Um, even, what's what's the one... Uh, Nick Lachey is... The Chinese are ruining the world, TikTok, and Nick Lachey. Those mm-hmm. are the, my three that I think are ruining the world. What is the one where you have to get engaged without seeing Is it Love is them? Blind? Maybe Love is Blind. Mm. Do you think they're farting into the microphones there? Because how can you get engaged <laughs> to somebody that's never farted in front of you? Here, here. I can see. Yeah, you have to smell somebody's fart to know if you want to live with them forever. It's a great point. You have to. Yeah. Is that a deal breaker, though? It depends on how st- the stench. Aha. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I think if, if it's like, if it's too, it's like, all right, she too has foul. something. Yeah, something wrong. Yeah, I think that's what dogs are doing. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you put a dog in a dog park, it's right for the other dog's asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, trying to get to know him right away. Yeah. Let's skip the steps. Humans should do that. We should do that. Yeah. You can see how clean someone is. Yeah. I fart pretty early in front of a woman. Do you? Yeah. Good for you. I'm a second dater. Whoa. Second date, you fart in front of a woman? It's a, it happens every day. You like roll the windows up and you hop you box, can't let fart her rip. in front of a woman on the second date? That's bold. Like there's certain things I'll hide from a woman like my wife, but yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not going <laughs> to, my bowel movements happen every single day. I'm not going to hide that from oh, you. Oh, you get comfortable quick. Yeah. Would that be a deal breaker, ladies? All right. Well, they don't, they're dead inside. Yeah. yeah. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I can smell it when Only they fart. Only inside their bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, sometimes I force them out and I've changed my drawers as an adult. Man, I don't even want to say the age. Yeah, here, here. Like kind of recently. Really? Yeah. I Sometimes I can't tell. You don't know if something right behind that mm-hmm. fart? I've walked up from the F train. Last F, step. F for I fart. could feel it de- leaking down my Have leg. Have you ever had an incident like that on stage? I don't wear underwear. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. I Raw dog in denim is crazy. I had a, a virus called H. pylori, which you get from eating ass. Okay. Fun fact for the kids out Wait, there. Wait, what is it called? Herpes. H. pylori. Oh. <laughs> HSV. Yeah. Yeah, HIV. Yeah. And uh, you get it from, in, in what do you call it? Eating feces. Ingesting mm. fecal matter. Thank you. This was the plump girl from Pittsburgh you got it from? This or is a different a one? plump girl from Cleveland. Do you okay. eat random ass on the road? I was. When I, when I was single, I was Cleveland really, ass. I put a, Napkin in the shirt and had a fork and a knife. Yeah, and I would really yeah. go full Rottweiler. Yeah, but um, fresh from the show, did you yeah. let them go home and, and wash up? No, no wash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now you know Better how flavor. you got the I, exactly. HPV. Yeah, that was on the rider. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta let them sit in the hotel bath with hot water. Let them bake a bit. Uh, that's let them not boil bad. under there, and then then but you're good to go. Sometimes you want a little oh yeah a little crust. Of course, you know? it's little, like cooking in the same pan. It's little got seasoning, some flavor. Little, yeah. Little, yeah, uh, I never wanted crust in my life. Never. <laughs> the second batch of bacon you make with the grease that's already there is always better. Yes, yeah. poo poo platter. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I went down on this this gal, and uh, two days later, I was like, "Whoa!" I was feeling all wonky, and I was shitting water. My mouth was dry, had a white tongue, mm-hmm. and just felt gross headaches. So I go to the hospital, and the guy goes, oh, "This is bad. Looks like you have H." Yeah, pylori. Yeah. Thank right. God. But point is, I had to shoot a Comedy Central special while having this this virus. I it wasn't healed yet. It was your flu game? 
Yes, it was my flu game. Mm-hmm. And if you pull up a photo, my face is this big. I'm sweating. I'm bloated. Comedy Central half hour, Mark Norman. And I had shit running down my leg throughout the set because it was just bubbly, gurgly, just mm-hmm. wet shit. And you, had, out. you were wearing shorts, right? Yeah, I had hot pants on. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It was it was a dark dark time. But so you did your Comedy Central special shitting on yourself. See, look, you can they put makeup on me, but yeah, you can see how just that doesn't up even look like you exactly. So th- those were dark times, but I got through it. Uh, did you reach out to the woman the same way you would had it been like chlamydia or something? Like, hey, I just want to let you know, nah, your, your ass is contagious. <laughs> and, like, I guess you I should wipe your ass is contagious. Like, maybe wet wipes next time. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I should have. I don't know how to. Hey, your ass is mm. filthy and <laughs> bacteria infested. You should yeah. uh, shower. I don't know. What do you say there? Wet wipes. Yeah. No, nah, now you need a full shower. Yeah. Not wet wipes. Well, then I have to see if you're a super spreader. You said two days is when the symptoms came. Yeah. Was there any ass? Did you bring any bacteria from that ass to another ass within mm, the two days? Good question. I don't believe I did, but that's a good question. Mm. <laughs> now, now, you ever had a girl on a date? Eat your old garbage can. Yeah, I have, yes. <laughs> oh, really? Mm-hmm. Pre-fart? Uh, post-fart. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is love. Yeah. And and it might have been at a steakhouse after. This just proves my point that white guys are some of the dirtiest motherfuckers. Oh, <laughs> you are yeah. king getting your ass ate, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. You wait, what? And the v- I, I love getting my ass ate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. Big, he's big on the diaper change. Yeah. That's his thing. Oh, oh really? Oh, man. Legs, over, shoulders to knees. Ah, uh, you yeah. like but the, the powder but in the there? the vegan yeah. butt is nastier, I feel like. How? I feel like my porterhouse butt is way more sanitary than your kale butt. There's no way. Butt. Mm, there's, there's no way. We smelling. gotta get a Q-tip in here and go to the lab. <laughs> <laughs> Q-tip the rapper, or <laughs> <laughs> he could eat my ass. Sure, he's cute. Uh, but, uh, I got news for you. <laughs> oh, he's a beautiful man. My ass eating alarm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Take your birth control. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, did they ever return the favor on the road? Yeah, but I always, uh, when I was a single guy, I'd always turn it uh, turn it down. Mm. I got a Hot Wheel in there and a gummy <laughs> yeah. bear and a paper. I don't know what's going on back there. There's mm. a ton of hair. It's bad. So you were just eating ass and send them, send them on their way. Yeah, I'm a giver. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> they did the two drink minimum. Got you yeah. your, your quote. I and I'll it. give you chlamydia. So let's go, from, <laughs> let's, let's go from ass eating straight to our politics. Great. Um, Same thing. Great transition. 2024, do you think that Trump has a real chance of winning again? I don't think so because uh, I think he blew his wad already. Mm-hmm. I I think a lot of the, the, the old shock tr- value is gone. Yeah, shock value is gone. I think all the people are going to go to DeSantis. Mm. Those same Trump people because the the thing Trump had was he says whatever he wants. He's bold. He speaks uh, his mind. He is yeah. he's uncensored. Yeah. And now we got another guy who's kind of like that, and he's a little more hinged. Yeah. I'm not a DeSantis guy, but he is a little more. Mm. normal seeming then trump was just fucking wacko yeah crazy guy so uh i don't think he's got as much of a shot so we do this thing on a show called same night same city mm. so same night same city trump or desantis who you go with which so. comedy show are you going to oh wait what <laughs> i'm confused same night <laughs> say, say they were doing what? a, a yeah. fundraiser rally whatever it is trump has one in the city desantis has one in the city which one are you attending well, I I wouldn't go to either because I've never gone to any political event. Mm. But uh, do I have to go to one? Yeah, Pete's, to go Pete's to one. going, so you got to go. All right. Well, if I'll smell that dong. <laughs> I would probably go to Trump just to see it and mm. be more of a spectacle. And you get to see the wackos in there. You know, yeah. the camo hats and the toothless. It's gonna be like a like a Connecticut casino. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, smoking <laughs> yeah. respirator. The bus to Foxwoods. Yeah, the guy on a random <laughs> you know that bus. scooter. <laughs> that bus stinks. Uh, I know that bus. <laughs> yeah, that bus stinks. Uh, what what are the crowds like? I mean, we already know what the women are like with the ass eating, but what what are crowds like from here versus like the Midwest? As far as jokes and, and things of that nature. Way yeah, down to like the political shit, I guess. Way better in the Midwest. Yeah. New York has gotten soft. New York has gotten weird with crowds. Mm. They've almost gotten so progressive that it's become conservative. Yeah. They're clenching oh, for sure. their pearls. They're like, oh, oh, and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you, queefs? Yeah, like, right. these are jokes. There's a guy mm. jerking off on McDougal Street, right. and you're like, oh, a gay joke. Yeah. Get out of here. Grow up. But then you go to Cleveland, and they're, they're loving it. That's what they mm. want. Yeah, and New York used to be the spot where you'd come and try dark shit and get weird, and they've gotten less open-minded over time, which is, I think, a big reason why you mentioned earlier people are leaving. 
<laughs> I know a girl. She grew up in Harlem. She's Chinese. She's super fun, cool as shit. She just moved to Denver. She's like, ah, New York sucks now. Damn. She grew up here. Mm. Sad. You hate to see it. But we went to the uh, the show in L.A., comedy show in L.A., and they made us uh, check our phones at the front. Oh, yeah. I think that I think that every comedy club sh- could do that. Should I do that. Completely. Or the comedy seller does it. They're the oh, only they do. one in New York who does it. And that's why I feel safe there, yeah. ironically, because some weirdo could just film you and cut your setup. And he said this. You're like, yeah, but it was a context. you right. know. But they cut that out and they put it on YouTube and who knows what. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who was early on that? I think Rock and Chappelle were probably the first people. Oh, Chappelle for sure. Yeah. I think Chappelle invested in that company and then and did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, is annoying, were. though, when you want to get on your phone. Yeah, I no, guess. But, no, I mean, I understand it because, it's, especially now, with everybody being so sensitive and, you know, comics feel like... Uh, comedy is the one art where you should take, you know, social and current events and things that's going on and people feel about... And find, like, the spot in it where we can laugh and joke about it. But if you have somebody filming something and they just post it on social media, it's like, oh, he said this and... yeah. Now they want to cancel you and all these things. And it's like, well, wait, like you said, it was a whole context to that. Of course, of course. And like, let's say you filmed Biggie at a show in Brooklyn before he was famous and then put that on the news. And you're like, look what these guys are saying out there. And you're like, yeah, but that wasn't meant for the news. That was meant for that room. Right. And that's the same with comedy. It was meant for that room. And now you're putting it on the news and you're going, geez, this guy's doing jokes about ass eating. And you're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, but you're a mom and... In Phoenix, on watching the news, and you weren't expecting ass eating, so of course yeah, you're yeah. offended, right? You yeah. know, but and you don't know club. what your daughter's doing in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you should listen to this bit, <laughs> right? Yeah, get some medication for H. pylori and clean your fucking ass, or <laughs> but get, get the vaccine, please. Yes, uh, um, I feel like th- that has some benefit though to comedy now because I remember that was the whole outrage, and anytime someone would interview a comedian and be like, "Is is the is the scene right now too soft?" and right. everyone offended. I think that's what makes comedy clubs more of an incentive to go now. Because finally, you can just not care about what is being said. Like, you can get to a safer place. I completely agree. But there are those nerds who come in. Just It almost feels like they're waiting. Like, oh, you say it. I'm going to get you. Because there's an industry in getting somebody. Oh, I mean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a huge one. Yeah, that's, they they act like they're heroes and doing it all in the name of justice, but they're like, oh, no, we got them. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'll be famous because I'll be the person who got that guy. Yeah. But that's a. Uh, but even last night, I mean, we're talking about the censoring. Chappelle's The Closer just won Best Comedy Album at the Grammys. And yeah. the year before that, Louis C.K.'s special one. So it seems like there's room for, like, it's still appreciated on a higher level. So I said that, and, and they killed me for it. I said I would absolutely go to see Bill Cosby. As a curiosity thing. Of I course. would have to see what he's talking about. Yeah. Like, what is his content? What is he talking about? Because he's had years to sit back and just think about how he's going to materialize all of these things that's happened to him and turn it into laughs, turn it into whatever type of content Bill Cosby could turn it into. And I feel like there would only be one show. And after that show, they would shut the whole shit down. (laughs) So the first show, I would have to be there because it's like, this is not going to continue to happen on the road. Probably not. No. But that's why he's going on the road because people are so curious. But if you go to that show, you better bring a pillow and a butt plug (laughs) because, uh, you know, he's a a sleeper. Don't sleep on that guy. But... I think it's crazy that, it, that that's happening. It's wild. It's wild. But I'm going. <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> Tell going. Tell me everything. I want to hear about it. I'm definitely going to what, see Bill Cosby. What is the temperature like in the comedy world with Cosby? Amongst comedians, not so much the audience. I mean, he is... I know people hate to hear this, but he is one of the greats. Absolutely. Like You wouldn't have Pryor without Cosby. You wouldn't have Seinfeld without Cosby. All these guys are doing Cosby. Uh, it's kind of like an NFL player who beats the shit out of his wife. Like... He still got those touchdowns, mm. you know. So like, you still put him on your fantasy team, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's it's still good. He's still good at comedy. I know everybody's like, how could he was never funny? And you're like, well, you that's very convenient. All so of you a sudden feel, he did bad shits, so and I was never funny. You mm-hmm. feel OJ should have killed Nicole? Is what you're saying? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> I read his book. He signed it. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> No, of course not. But I'm just saying he was a good football player. Yeah, yeah. Look, at him, I'm sitting there like I'm a woman who got molested. Yeah. Like, oh, I need That's a, why you pee the bed. Yeah, I need a coffee and hold it with two hands. Uh, <laughs> so, no. Um, it's a huge chair. It is an awkward seat. Yeah, it's giant. I feel so far away from you guys. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the Cosby thing's crazy. Uh, but tell me But everything. you would go see it, though. I've seen him before. I saw him before he got canceled. I'm, I was a fan, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, I would love to hear about it. <laughs> but you're not going. Uh, 
you want to be? I'm just lazy and I'm all I'm on the road. Yeah, I got things to do. <laughs> so yeah. That's yeah. when I got things I'm, to do. Yeah. I'm loaded. I got a Pittsburgh date. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I can't. And I can't I've seen it before, so yeah. I'm all right. Do you think uh, there'll be comedians in support at the show? I doubt it. Yeah. I really? doubt it. That's a career killer right there. What if Hannibal opened? I like Hannibal. I saw him in uh, LA after the Chappelle <laughs> tackle at the Hollywood Bowl. I saw Hannibal. I was like one of two honkies at the after party, mm-hmm. and Hannibal was there, and we, we chatted, and he's a... Uh, He's so he's like a cool guy now. He was always like a comic, but now I was like I was like intimidated by him. He was <laughs> hip. Yeah. He was using lingo and slang. I couldn't yeah. keep up. He's acting black. Yeah. I guess I so, it. yeah. yeah. So I, I had it. to get out of there. I'm not yeah. a fan. But uh, <laughs> Does that happen often with comedians that like make it? You can tell. Oh they're yeah. just a little they they move oh, yeah. a little different. Well, we're nerds our whole life. We're losers, low self esteem, and then you finally make it and you see guys just totally one eighty. Mm-hmm. But I think that's with every I'm sure that's what every uh, success story, a lot of them. That's just weird, though. It's it's uncomfortable. It's weird. Because we know deep down. Yeah. That it's like, you're depressed. Cut it yeah. out. There's a dweeb in there. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like comedians, though, still, at least the ones with longevity, are still interesting to listen to. Because we look with rappers that get rich, mm-hmm. and at some point, they're only talking about money, and the shit gets kind right. of... Mm-hmm. I think I was watching uh, Seinfeld and... Uh, Comedians and Cars with uh, Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. And Jamie Foxx was like, when I got money, next thing I knew I was on stage, like, anyone got the new Land Rover? <laughs> Brakes are crazy on that. Yeah. And it's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just, Can't relate. Yeah, have you seen a, a lot of that with maybe, because comedy right now, I feel like is so profitable, yeah. more than it's ever been, that you see comedians starting to oh, yeah. turn into more successes than... Totally. And their whole act is about like, so I was hanging out with Jay-Z. The yeah, day, yeah, yeah. And you're like, eh, I liked it better when you were poor and fat. You yeah, know? yeah. Is it um, Aziz's fault, you think? <laughs> That's who I was thinking of. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> here's what happens with, with comics. They will get huge. They will get a big head. They will get an ego and all that and, and, and all the money and success. And then they'll fall off a little and then they'll have to come back and be normal again. Mm-hmm. So there's a weird kind of roller coaster effect yeah uh is it more difficult to do bigger spots than it is to do the clubs i'm a club guy i i do theaters too but a theater is like a show like yeah. here we are at this theater but a club i feel like i can tinker and work and go in and out mm. talk to the crowd try a bit that bombs talk about how it bombed yeah mm-hmm. go back to a bit that works with a theater you got to just kill it mm-hmm. so they're both great in different ways a theater is like a hot beautiful woman that you got to Go down on, eat out, and then a club is like a a real porker. You can just piss on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ass ain't ever, yeah. Get That's H- the one you get your disease from. Get HPV from. A real yeah, porker. Yeah, yeah. H- by a Lord, porker. H- by, yeah, <laughs> so both are fun in their own way. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, that's what you were getting to. Yeah. How Full do you, circle. How do you feel about uh, the whole Chinese uh, spy balloon? Ah, the spy balloon. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that was really a spy balloon? I don't know. I'm so stupid. I feel like this was some. This is like a whole, just hoax. Yeah. Well, they're over Montana, so they're already fucking up. Yeah. There's mm. nothing going on over there, but except for our nukes. Is that right? Yeah. They were over the nuke field. Oh, really? Mm. Oh shit. Do should we get into conspiracy? Yeah. I, mean, I think let's that's do why. It. That's why it took so long. They had to figure out how to get another balloon up there so we could shoot it down. <laughs> they didn't get a balloon. They just sent some fighter they sent jets a up fucking there. Fucking F-50 yeah. up there. I know. To, to they had to put the balloon up first though. They put up. Wait, we put a balloon up. We might have put both those balloons oh, up. Oh, oh, you're doing like the 9/11 approach with this. Well, I think Uh-oh. the well, fact that what? he's saying it's an inside job. Maybe the first oh, okay. one wasn't. I mean, you know, you can do your research on uh, the Prophet Elijah Muhammad, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Hold as on, far let me as face what Mecca for this yeah. conversation. <laughs> All right, we could have a whole conversation about Ezekiel's wheel, but that'll be another yeah. time. Let's deal with the Chinese balloon in itself. It was chilling from Alaska down down to Canada, down into Montana. I love that we have to call it a Chinese balloon. <laughs> yeah, like, well, it was a Chinese crazy. virus. It's got to be a Chinese yeah, balloon. Absolutely. Chinese. Uh, a balloon. China. <laughs> but if it was made in China, it can't be that durable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But we're all on TikTok anyway. They got our info. Yeah, I mean, we're yeah. like, this balloon, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop us. That's why I feel like this is TikTok. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, was, I was texting my dad from an iPhone saying, damn, hope China doesn't take our data. Exactly. <laughs> From exactly. an iPhone. I'm looking at a 14-year-old's camel toe twerking, and I'm like, oh, no, the balloon. Yeah. No, they already That's got me. That's your personal algorithms, too. That's what China learned about you. You got that you. right. Uh, <laughs> targeted ad. But I do think after it was, what, four or five days it was chilling? Yeah. 
and we couldn't shoot it down because fear of the two people that live in Montana. The yeah, balloon, the balloon could house. fall yeah. on them. Yeah, they it, shot gets it, down to South, Carolina, it gets right? it gets to South Carolina. Oh yeah, go crazy! And that it's a fighter jet. <laughs> it's a and we put another balloon up there for the show. <laughs> they so? definitely they. Come on, we've all been to uh, funerals and services when you just put the balloons up. It was mm -hmm. the same thing. It was yep. the Biden family? They let the balloon up. Fighter jet circled around like the beginning of a football game, and then it just exploded. I thought it was one of Pete's old condoms. Just yeah, it up, you know? <laughs> for sure. It does seem like how Greta Thunberg would get around. <laughs> just yeah, it was like balloon. James and the Giant Peach. Right. <laughs> right. Um, what do we think happens after this, though? Because China seems well, pissed off that we shot it down. Oh, there's another they? one coming up yeah. from Central America. We Venmo them right. like $20 for the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also another Chinese app. Let oh, is Venmo? Geez. I mean, they own everything. They got us by the balls. <laughs> With the balloons, they really do. I just think it's hilarious that there was a Chinese balloon above our nukes that they wouldn't shoot down, and then Jill Biden presented the Song of the Year award at the Grammys. I know. This is a weird time. <laughs> the fuck is going on? Not here? only that, Sam Smith had the whole performance of, uh, you know, obviously devil worship or whatever it was. He was the devil. Wow, uh, really? Fire this, everywhere. The song was called Unholy. Unholy. I missed, I missed the subtle YouTube conspiracy Illuminati shit. Like back when they were putting it on Jay-Z and Beyonce, it would just be like little triangles yeah. behind... Their napkins now, would be Now folded. Sam Smith literally has on devil horns and saying, I'm the fucking devil. Yeah. I like miss... The wow. underground subtlety yeah. as far as Illuminati worship. And you're giving the Republicans too much to worry. Oh, <laughs> look at these gays. I told yeah. you they were devil. I told you they were Satan. Yeah. It's in the good book. Yes. The exactly. Old Testament. The crazy part about all of that shit was right after they finished that performance, it went into a COVID commercial. Uh, <laughs> they was throwing around a Presented COVID by Questlove. Yeah, they, <laughs> they was throwing around a COVID ball. I was like, yo, this is not sick to anybody but me. Wow. Yeah. A devil performance, COVID commercial. Mm. I'm like, all right, man. It's too much. And then you watch The Last of Us, and it's just a, a pandemic show. Great show. Great show. Last of Us is a great show. Don't shit on I'm a don't. fan. Okay. I just watched the new one. But it's just weird. Like, now this is entertainment. It's There was no 9-11 sitcom. You know no, what I mean? Right. Like, well, it's weird that we had people dying. Millions of people died. And then it's like, this could be a good, good show. Mm -hmm. You know? Somebody had to write that. Speaking of 9-11 and scripts... Um, and planned things. Did you see that they revealed the NFL and Super Bowl script? Script? Script, yes. The NFL is scripted. Uh, we, according we know, to Arian Foster. Well, he was being sarcastic, but then they leaked the actual script. Is this the Manti Teo text thread? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. He was just a fucking loser that didn't know how to work Facebook. Um, <laughs> he got we've all, been, we've all been there. We've all been there. Those dicks, they sneak up on you. Uh, so the leak was... <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs, 34, Eagles, 37. Yeah. It's got the date, time, stadium, attendance, time of game, everything what? all broken down here. It's on the internet, so you know it's true. Yeah, yeah like wow. This, there's no way that this is fake or doctored or anything. <laughs> that's actually the exact score that I had before that came out. I, that's what I sent to Vegas a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they leaked another one of this guy from December 16th, 2015 that predicted from 2016 to 2026 – of all the Super Bowl wins. And he got them. So far, he has been correct. Because wow. you can't Photoshop the date on the no. tweet. No. 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 It's can't. Twitter. Okay. You couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but he does have the Eagles winning. Okay. And that fits with the script that was put out, the 37 and 34. Interesting. So, so now if the game happens Sunday and this is the score. Mm -hmm. That's eerie. Coincidences, coincidences are real. Sure. But this is a little, all right, we got to have a deeper conversation now. How I real agree. is this NFL script shit? I blame AI. It's getting too good. Chat GBT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it, can, it can do everything now. I mean, we don't even know if Mahomes is really a person. That's have you seen true. him in, in real life? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he's a person. I don't even know if he's really black. They said two black quarterbacks. <laughs> I thought he was half. I don't know. That's fucked up, though, if you look at the scripts. And uh, what was the gentleman's name from the Bills? I'm happy he's all right. No OJ thing. Simpson. Hamlin. But, oh. Yeah. Imagine getting the script and your lung drops in the script. <laughs> ah, like a heart attack. There's yeah. a shitty, like how, yeah. how do they even gamble on who gets the Tom Brady script and then who gets the OJ Simpson script? Right. Tom Brady script. Because there is the, uh, the reprise of the- <laughs> Giselle dumb shit. Yeah. Like, well, look at the, the spinoffs. Giselle, he gets the Giselle spinoff. OJ gets the Nicole spinoff. Right. How, when does the script stop with NFL players? Interesting. 
Ray mm. Rice. That was a very good documentary. Yeah, who wrote that? That was, that was a Law and Order script that he yeah. got. <laughs> bum, bum. Who wrote that script? Ice-T. <laughs> was he improvising? Yes. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez is like, wait, I don't want this part. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> I I, I, I some method this. acting. I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much I subscribe to all of this NFL scripted shit. Um, no. I do, I do believe that there are, you know, obviously with uh, gambling now being leg- legal, and, uh, you know, some of the jerseys have the fucking gambling logos on the fucking jersey. So, obviously, mm. they're in business with each other. Uh-huh. So, I do believe that refs massage sure. the game a little yeah. bit, miss a call here, give them a call back here. They get handsy. Yeah, they, 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 they massage a little bit. I don't know about handing out scripts and saying, okay, this is what has to happen. Yeah. It's I don't crazy. know about that. That's the beauty of sports. It's unpredictable. Yeah. How do they do that with WWE and everything? Like, scripted. I would be That's pissed at, at pre-production, of course, but I would be, like, pissed at pre-production. Like, I'm trying to get my career off the ground, but it's based off the writers. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, how do you become The Rock? Like, did everyone just decide this guy- That's a great we're question. We're going to make- Great point. I think it's whoever has the most draw drawing power. Is it like a union contract? Does, did The Rock bid on being him? <laughs> like- Right. I, I, think they, I think they gauge it off of- they start to see how many people are in the stands, who they're cheering for, and they're like, okay, mm-hmm. obviously yeah. this guy is the guy now like, yeah. that people want to see. So we have to create this script around him, hit this character now. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, the guy. Eventually he's gonna run into Vin Diesel and, yeah. and then Paul Vince Walker Mc- and then they'll get together. Vince yeah. McMahon's like, I don't love I don't love my storyline. <laughs> If yeah, we can no. change that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the, uh, the he was in some ladies. shit with yeah, he he just he was in some uh some some trouble with uh Sexual harassment or something like that. Yeah. Do you think uh, Chris Benoit read ahead in his script? Uh, <laughs> I'm, <bad. laughs> I'm sorry. Chris Benoit. It was just sitting right no, there. He didn't, didn't read the script. <laughs> I forgot about it. He went rogue. He didn't read his script at all. No. The no, producers the next morning were like, what the f? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he fucked this whole plan up. Yeah, uh, yes, I am. Fun to joke about family murder. But, uh, um, you said you're going to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Who are you rooting for? I'm going to go Eagles because a lot of the guys I'm with are from Philly. So okay. I'm going to go Eagles. Are you an Eagles fan by, are you a Saints fan? Saints fan all Saints the way. Fan. But it'll be fun. I'm going to do mushrooms. It'll be a and good time. Mushrooms okay. and then go to the game? At the game, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are we like microdose or do mushrooms? We're going to do mushrooms. I might have a Hamlin out there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> if we see someone rush the field ass naked, it'll be you. That'll be me, yeah. <laughs> Uh, first time doing mushrooms? No, okay. I'm on them now. Gotcha. No, no, I do them all the time. It's my favorite drug. Yeah, this lamp doesn't look like this. No, that's a big, that's Pete's This dick. would be a great shroom lamp, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it is Pete's dick. Uh, when was the first time you did shrooms? First time I did them, oh, geez, high school, I guess. Mm. But yeah, did some acid, but shrooms are better. Natural. What's the difference between acid, acid and shrooms? I would say acid is like liquor and shrooms is like beer. Gotcha, so, okay. Acid, you're just like, good whoa, yeah. Yeah. you're wonked out, you're all jacked up. It's too much. It's a chemical. Okay. The shrooms are, you know, natural. So you know, they last five hours, no hangover, fun, easy peasy. Where did acid take you? Oh, my God. Well, that's <laughs> when I got H by Lori. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought I was kissing her mouth. Uh, <laughs> but no, no. Uh, acid was just too much. You know, we just sit in a, in a room and watch The Wizard of Oz and jerk off. So yeah. it wasn't fun, you know. <laughs> But shrooms, you can go to the park, you can go to a movie, you can go out. Can jerk off too? Yeah. You can jerk off too. Your dick's huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Do you do them? Yeah. I've oh. done shrooms. I've never done acid before. Ah, uh, you don't need it. Never, but uh, I'm not big shrooms. on the microdose shroom wave that is now. I, I, I agree. I'd go for it. Same. I, the microdose thing I've tried with the chocolate, I, it you does don't nothing. Feel anything. It does I'm, nothing for me. Same here. Same. Like, I really want to resent my childhood when I do drugs. Like, yeah. I don't want to just like. You want to escape. Yeah. No, I noticed black guys don't fuck with the psilocybin. We yeah, we you got, know that's we your, got your some, wife's name. Yeah, but we got, we got yeah, <laughs> we got some shit in our past that we just try not to just tap into. I see. Well, when did yeah. that change? Because I feel like Wu Tang was big on like the psychedelics, uh, and then something yeah. happened. When let me tell you, during Black History Month, as a white man about yeah. black culture, right? Um, I feel like in black culture, the shroom thing changed, and now it's coming back. But Wu Tang was crazy on that stuff. Yeah, but we weren't trying to and do to what me, they were doing. And to me, Wu-Tang defines black culture. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, we were, yeah. not all of us were trying to do it, what it's, it's Method Man and, nothing and, and Ray were doing. We weren't trying to do that. Mm. Uh, I'm just a weed smoker. Yeah, I yeah, smoke yeah. weed and that's it. I do want to, like, we were talking about going to, like, Joshua Tree and taking shrooms and just being in the desert and just... It's fun. You know, having a ball with that. But I've never I've never done shrooms. I, just, I think you would enjoy it. You're a, you're a chill guy. Yeah. Do you like to drink? 
I don't drink. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, this could be a good good uh, substitute for the booze. Okay. And there's no hangover. It's good. Not, not bad for you. Yeah. I might like it. Just saying. Okay. I'm going to try. No, I'm definitely going to try it. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to do it. All is there, right. Is there anything you're scared that you might unlock during shrooms? No. Just don't do it at the Cosby show you go yeah, to. No, no. That's, well, you're not going to have a choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't get him a drink. Yeah. Don't I, See, this is why I don't drink. It's, there you go. Because you know of Cosby? Because of Cosby, yeah. I was like, oh, that guy. Uh, I'm, I don't I'm think cool. you're his type. I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't, I don't sleep well, so maybe I'll go to the show. Yeah. Get a fucking nap in. <laughs> Well rested, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you don't think you'll unlock anything on your first shroom trip? Not, not unlock anything. I don't. I don't have any any trauma. Uh, well, I, I have. We all have traumas, but I don't have anything that I think uh, taking shrooms will uh, reveal or anything like that. Mm. Nah. I don't think so. I mean, the fridge might move, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fun. The fridge should move. Yeah, it gets wavy. <laughs> yeah. Um, NFL wise, do we think Tom Brady will show his face at the Super Bowl? Ooh, he's retired now. You know, athletes go once they're retired. Um, I think he's going. I think he'll be there. Really? I think this will be like the introduction to his uh, analyst career. I think they're going to have him on the sidelines doing some things or in studio doing some things. I mean, when you don't have to uh, parent, you have plenty of time on your hands. Yeah, and they're paying him uh, a lot more than he his NFL contract was. So mm-hmm. I think this will be our first introduction to Tom Brady, the NFL analyst. I think we'll get a, I think we'll get a in studio appearance. Ten year, three hundred and seventy five million dollars. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. This is the offer to abandon. No, his he kids. signed that already. Oh, oh he really? Signed yeah, 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 he yeah. signed it. He signed they, it before he retired. If they put him on the kiss cam, will he just kiss his son? <laughs> All right, but <laughs> his son uh, would have to be there. He'd do that for a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting though because I've been vocal for years. I'm very much pro abandon your family. I think. Oh, really? I think some of our greatest. Our our greatest Mar- Mark's oh, oh really <laughs> like, I'm intrigued like, yeah. I want to hear this yeah, yeah, yeah. I, some of our uh, greatest leaders greatest minds greatest innovators people that have changed the world there is something in common with some part of the family being abandoned anyone that's in a healthy structure always is underwhelming they're never really a cool person I like, agree they never their brain stays very right here like if LeBron had a father he's trash no no he's just a, a weirdly uh athletic postman at that point mm. uh, uh-huh. I okay. I would I would ante up and say molesting oh for sure is very uh oh, I mean, that's, that's how that's how we got our series well, you're deal. in good company yeah, yeah. Wait. oh really oh, yeah. were you molested a couple times whoa <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> send me the tape <laughs> Good for you, you know, man. now I'm a little self-conscious. I, I I was not worthy of the tape. They didn't uh, want to watch it later. Yo, Mark, send and me at the that tape. Time, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> so we can analyze it? Yeah, like, send me the tape. I'm going to tell Tom, you where you went wrong. <laughs> that's Tom Brady's first gig. Yeah. <laughs> Analyst. I want to see the molesting. Well, Pamela Anderson was molested. Tyler Perry was molested. Oprah was molested. These are all giant yeah. household names. Yeah. For sure. Because it leads to addiction, and sometimes people put their career as their addiction. I could break it down. Now, with that said, <laughs> Tom Brady's kids, Firsthand. he abandoned too late. They already got into the family structure. They're used to the yeah. money. And True. on top of that, there's nothing to really prove wrong. Because when you get abandoned by your family, it's like, I'm going to show everyone that I mattered. Mm-hmm. He abandoned his kids and then didn't make the playoffs. Oh, There's nothing. Or I'm mm. sorry. The first round of the playoffs. Yeah, he made the playoffs. You can't abandon your family and then come back to the house without the ring. Like a week later. Yeah, really. Like, you, you guys can't are, do that, man. You guys have high standards. He's still Tom Brady. He still won a couple Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah, I, but he didn't abandon his family at that point. I the, see. the slate gets clean the moment you abandon the family. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Because you could go back to your wife. So according like, to you, Brady has no rings. Not in his household. Okay, got you. We're talking BC, AD, yeah, before abandonment, yeah, before championship. You can come back to Giselle and say, "Look, I inspired the children. Told them, look, I'm going to focus on what I want." And I came back and I achieved it. I'm a role model now. Mm-hmm. Now he's just some bum that got knocked out the first round and left his kids uh, at the bus stop. They had mm-hmm. to walk home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Is now that official that he, he's abandoned them? Well, I mean, we don't care about facts on this podcast. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't know if he was just, was, is, are they living I'm with I'm pretty Giselle? sure he was with his children on Instagram today. He yeah. But not a, for, for the purposes of this podcast. He has a new girlfriend. She's like the classic Tampa blonde, fake everything. Nice. He has a new girlfriend already? She's like 24, well, 25. Well, Tom Brady. I yeah, but think. a girlfriend? You just want to date? You want to just uh, have yeah, fun a little a bit? Point. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, good point. Uh, you should be eating ass. He's All right, as, as someone that has uh, an abundance of exes, fucking a bunch of girls doesn't piss them off. Looking happy with another girl. Ooh, that's that's the well that's said. the real one. 
Mm. He can't get back back at Giselle for fucking bitches. He's Tom Brady. He could walk outside. He could take a chick from Pete Davidson. That's how ill Tom yeah, Brady is. Yeah, but you know how. You know, if Tom Brady looks happy with one girl, that's, that's the stat. Yeah, but see, men, we can't play that game because it, Giselle... Well, can, he can't play games anymore. He got kicked out of the, he's out of the playoffs. Yeah, but Giselle can literally do one thing that will crush Tom Brady's whole existence. Black guy? Fuck a black guy. There you go. <laughs> you don't think Giselle Fuck. has fucked a black guy? I'm, I'm saying, I'm talking about uh, publicly. Antonio Brown. If she publicly wow. comes what out... What if she fucked Pete? Oh, <laughs> like that would, has been the rebound. Everything Tom lately. has, everything yeah. Tom has achieved, it all crumbles if Giselle walks hand in hand with one black guy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a, a Pat Mahomes type of black guy. No, no, like a I'm Bodega. talking about, yeah, I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about like fucking the, the, what's the guy from Oz? My, Michael Irving Ad, on Coke. BC. I'm talking about like an Ada type of black, <laughs> the yeah. Blood Diamond. Yeah, yeah, Blood yeah. Diamond type of black. Oh, yeah. that's hot. I want to yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Pete... Because nothing crushes a in. man more than when you're like, I can't figure out what her type is. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, Tom Brady's new girlfriend. Woo, doggy. That's a star David on her neck above her tits. Oh, is well, that right? She's a religious woman. That's yeah. why. Damn. Oh, she didn't David. take that on the Sabbath. I thought that was the little thing you put in between the pizza pie. Oh, like yeah. the, the ta- yeah, the chair. Yeah, the little table. <laughs> I'd like to go in her temple. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Hold on, what we're talking... Oh, yeah, Pete. Yeah, Pete yeah. and Tom Brady <laughs> Pete, might have... <laughs> Tom Brady might have rings, but Pete's just got, he's wearing Nuva rings. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, 17 yeah. of those. Yeah, he <laughs> knocks Nuva rings right out of the fucking cervix. <laughs> totally. He can, t- he can take an IED out of yeah. her. With That's what he does. Oh, yeah. That's what he does. Speaking yeah. of uh, upgrading your girlfriend uh, or going younger, Leonardo DiCaprio's new girlfriend is 19. Damn. And there's a rumor about him that he cuts him off once they hit 25. So do you not think that this is just a long term investment? Oh, this is a long term relationship. Uh, he might marry this one. Uh, I have a theory that he likes to drop women before they can rent a car. Mm. Because you've got to be 25 to rent a car. Yeah, so I yeah. think he's like, ah, I'm going to get out before you can get a car. Yeah. That's my theory. They can't pop up. It's hard to pop up on someone, especially, you know, on the road. Exactly. That's a, that's yeah. a little creepy, though. Leo should not be dating a 19-year-old. 19 is young. That's a little crazy. Yeah. We understand 18 he legally said, is, you know. It's, it's legal. Little, it's fucking nuts. Yeah, Don't like, say it's a little f- crazy. But I'm just, it's but, crazy. But, but, He's but. 48. Wow. Yeah, man. But I does the woman feel- have a say? Never. Whoa. Okay. Women have agency. She's a, she wants to date him. He she can date him. Yeah, but doing uh, devil's advocate nine, here. Come on, Leo. 19. 19 is pretty wild. 29 year difference. What are you talking about? She hasn't seen half his movies. She hasn't seen any of his movies. Yeah. He's like, oh, did you see... Uh, what was the last movie Leonardo DiCaprio did? See Gangs in New York? No, I wasn't she alive. She definitely didn't see that. She yeah. definitely didn't see uh, Gangs in New York. I believe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is probably his last film. She may have She may have seen And that was like, five, what, four years ago? She was... Yep. That came out in 2019. What about... Uh, she her, 15, her father 15. probably don't look grew up. up on Growing Pains. If, you're, if you go through oh, the Growing Pains. Oh, Growing Pains. Yeah, he was the bad boy. The adopted kid. With beautiful hair. Beautiful young boy. You couldn't be an orphan with that hair. No. That's where I think growing pains got it. A pedo would scoop him up. For sure. What? <laughs> In, In that second. system? Ah, oh, forget about it. Oh, yeah. He'd be the Tom Brady of that system. <laughs> yeah. Um, a pedo would scoop him up. <laughs> <laughs> no with that head of hair? Come on. Uh, well, I mean, Leo's been doing this. It's creepy as fuck. And yeah. you guys are weird for calling Leo creepy, but saying you can't wait to go to the Cosby show. Like where do we draw? Where going. do we draw the line with you two? No, no, I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I want to hear about the cousins. Yeah, like I, I would want to go because I'm telling you, it's gonna be only one. Would you show. go on a date with Leo and the 19 year old? Fuck no, hell no. All right, you're all over the board. I can't figure Why? you out. I would want to hear what Leo and the 19 year old talk about on a date. No, like what do they talk? What is in common besides wanting to? Fuck? She can't even pronounce fucking. She's like, "What's the Wi-Fi?" Yeah, like yeah. that's exactly <laughs> that's all she's gonna say at the dinner table is, "What's the Wi-Fi?" I mean, that's if she has her own phone. Mm. Mm. She's True. at that age. Leo where runs a, Leo family runs a tight ship. <laughs> you know, Leo's like, listen, no, my girlfriends aren't allowed to have phones. Yeah, he has child a lock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can use your phone from five to nine. Yeah. yeah. He's like China. <laughs> no sugar. No alcohol. She can't even drink. I just no. realized that. She can't even go to a bar oh, yeah. with where do you meet a 19 year old? Yeah, but that's probably old. to his benefit. Like, oh, we can't go to this uh, restaurant. We can't go out. Yeah, yeah you can't, can't go out. Anyway. You got, I guess you got to come on my yacht in the middle of nowhere. Good point. Good point. But wasn't Leo part of that whole uh, pussy posse? Pussy posse. The pussy posse. Pussy posse. Pussy yes. Whatever. I'm telling you, we are, we are, we are on the brink of seeing Leo being called to the podium. They're for some sexual. Oh, it's, it's coming. It's definitely happening because you can't be running around with these young girls. 
be part of a crew called the Pussy Posse from the early 2000s or late 90s, running around Manhattan, banging everything. And one of your mans was David Blaine. Yeah. And so who knows yeah, what was happening? Well, like, he makes those charges disappear. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And E from Entourage. Oh, That's was a, he in there? He was in the Pussy. And uh, Spider-Man. Was, was Toby. Toby. Toby was in there. Interesting. But Toby has gentle eyes, so He's I think cute. he can get away with it. Yeah. Leo, you're like, yeah, he, whatever they're saying, he probably did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but the thing about the pussy posse is I meant that as a compliment Those girls want to fuck those guys That's all consensual yeah. I'd, I'd say I hope You hope But I you know Those guys rolled up on me in 1996 Go read some of the articles about them I pull them. a full Kaepernick Get on a knee I feel like we <laughs> I feel like we owe Suge Knight, Death Row, Tupac Them like an apology Go read about the pussy patrol They were menacing New York City Oh yeah The streets were not safe no. Say what you want about BMF. Toby and Leo were way fucking worse. Well, one was fucking women. One was killing people. No, they were yeah. running around beating up bouncers and shit. Oh, uh, that's true. They did beat up some bouncers. David Blaine was literally really? making people disappear. Go they read articles. Beating up bouncers. Those twinks? Yes. <laughs> twinks. <Wow. laughs> Those fucking twinks. I can twinks. imagine Toby Bunch McGuire. Fucking squeak. <laughs> He's I mean, like I guess, doing, yeah, I mean, he's Spider Man. No, nah, man, it, none of that was CGI. That was all toe. That was all toe. <laughs> that was all jizz. <laughs> all right, Mark. Who's the one person where you had a show and you looked out in the audience and saw them sitting there and was like, "Oh shit!" Wow. Uh, probably Seinfeld. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he was at the that. cellar once. John Stewart was at the cellar once uh, when I was on. That's always nerve. When there's another comic in the audience, you really you really freeze because mm-hmm. you you know they know your tricks, right. so you feel like a fraud. <laughs> you know did uh seinfeld or john stewart laugh at all yeah yeah i got to open for seinfeld after that nice yeah okay, so that's that dope. was cool great that's, guy nice guy another one that that dated young that's we, true we, we put that one under the rug it's true 90s different time yeah come on he wears cool sneakers yeah. At seinfeld. yeah he's young at heart <laughs> <laughs> he's young what, at heart what uh what is jerry seinfeld like I know cars, it's a very broad question. Cars, right? baseball, and comedy. That's it. Mm. That's all he wants to talk about. Yeah. But I just got married, and he's like, let's get lunch. We're going to figure out how to get through this. That's nice of him. Yeah. he's, we, he's Together. Yes. Because yeah. he's like, I know all the moves. I can teach you how to not get divorced. So That's a good friend to have. NDAs. Yeah. <laughs> um, Great rap group. Jon Stewart. What, what is- <laughs> Great rap group. <laughs> what, uh, what's Jon Stewart like? That, Sweetest that guy, liberal bastard. <laughs> Super nice. He's little. He's very little, but he's mm. a, he's cute as pie, and <laughs> smart as a whip. Like you listen to him talk at the table, and you're like, man, this guy is brilliant. Mm. Uh, what do you think about uh, Caitlyn Jenner unfollowed uh, Kendall? Hey, good transition, which yeah. is what she said. Yeah. Um, let's see. She followed who? She unfollowed Kendall. Oh shit! She's Boy. in her seventies. She unfollowed women. Hate women. Seventy three year old woman. Yeah. Unfollowed. Interesting. All right, so, all right. So tell me she's not a woman. Exactly. Caitlin's a woman. That's a woman move. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Solid- <laughs> Solidify it. <laughs> Only a woman would unfollow her. Did daughter. that confirm her gender? Because yes. she unfollowed yes. Kendall? Yeah. That no, I think we owe her an apology. <laughs> woman of the year. That in the car wreck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Women can't drive. Uh they're never held accountable for their actions. Cause didn't someone die in that car accident? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She marked the shit out of them. Uh Emotionally <laughs> terrible and unfollowed her daughter <laughs> after she was acting like a whore. She's the hottest Kardashian, if you ask me. Caitlyn? Kendall. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> uh, your preference is your preference. Yeah, yeah, Caitlin. yeah. I like a dick. <laughs> um, I think she kept the dick, by the way. Give that a goog. Really? Yeah. Give that a goog. <laughs> yeah. Is it on Google Images? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dick print? <laughs> yeah. Her and some Nike tech sweats? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you say that because Pete is already... Has he? No, you didn't say Kim because Pete's already been. Oh, I just think Kendall is the most. She looks the most natural to me. The rest of them feel like they've really chopped them some some shit up. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kendall, (laughs) Kendall's pretty, very pretty. Yeah, Yeah. but Kylie's pretty too. But it's all feels all manufactured. Courtney's Mm -hmm. pretty too, though. Yeah, yeah. She gets kind of uh, usurped by the other ones because. She's not like a. She's so a, she's laid back. Yeah, she's, she's like a normal looking hot. The she's more like she's more like her father. Yeah. OJ. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's her father. That's, that's uh, Chloe. That's just wrong. That's just fucked oh, up. Which Chloe's which is the bigger OJ. one? Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. Chloe. Chloe. I think yeah. she had the surgery. 
Oh, oh no, Kendall. Maybe now. Well, they all have had surgery. I'm talking about gender. <laughs> That's true. Gender affirming surgery is what it's it's known as. Okay, I balls think. are gone. Do they take where Where do you put yeah. the, Where do you put the dick and balls? You I'm not even trying to like make a. I'm really I think asking. on the mantle. Like, I you just, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you got to bronze it. Yeah. Yeah, you right, right next that. to Nana's ashes. You have to bronze it. Yeah, I mean, those are like those are gold medal. Well, what if winning. you what if you turn it into like a door knocker? Ah, uh, I like that. <laughs> in front of, in front yeah. of your door. You like, know, some people take their ashes and like make rings. Yeah, to yeah, pass, no. yeah. Like turn you just do door door knocker. And then the worst part is somebody goes, "Oh, you should have gotten hard before you did it." You're like, <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn. <laughs> it was freezing when they made this in yeah. the factory. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought the bronze would make me look bigger with the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Contouring. Did it so Giselle wouldn't fuck a black guy. It didn't uh, work out. Is 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 circumcision cultural appropriation? Uh for Jews? Like because I'm not Jewish, but I'm snipped. So yeah, isn't I'm, that I'm, cultural appropriate? I'm an Irish Catholic boy. That's across the board with us. You're snipped? Yeah. Okay. Oh no, aesthetically it looks great. I'm it snipped. It does. You're snipped? Yeah. What what is your thing? What's my thing? What's your background? I'm everything. Uh, what's your uh, <laughs> What's your thing? What uh, are yeah. you? <laughs> uh, my mom. My mom. It's very racially ambiguous. I want to. Yeah, you're, you're too yeah. ambiguous. I can't tell if you're Uber or if you're <laughs> yeah. uh, Lyft, yeah. Iron Dome, or what? What are we talking here? <laughs> my mom's Lebanese. Oh man, Lebanese are hot. 100. percent Oh, I mean. Yeah, that was that was weird. To, no, yeah, that my was... mom's one hundred percent Lebanese. Lebanese women are hot too. I'll Beautiful. Too. And yeah. then dad, they my are. dad's uh, my dad's mixed. He's like different African descents, like Cape Verdean, uh, some Portuguese, fucking uh, like Nigerian. He's all over the map, just I all gotcha. of Africa. Okay, the whole diaspora. All right. So I either have a gun on me or a pipe bomb. <laughs> but have you done a twenty three? Not my parents did, but I haven't done one. But I, I mean, my mom's was a waste of money. It was uh, just one hundred percent. 23 and me is a uh, Leo's dating app. Yes. But uh, well, that's a little old for him. That's a little old, you're right. He has to find that. <laughs> yeah, 23. No. The, the spitting in a cup, I don't know. It that's too, just weird. It takes a lot of spit. It takes a lot of spit. You did yeah. it. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, it's it's I took a break. Wow. Jeez. Like, was, me too. And, what? And I moved it from my kitchen cuz I felt like it was very inappropriate in a public space of the house. I see. Halfway through the tube, I was like, I'm going to go. You went under the covers. I need some privacy. (laughs) So wait, you just have to keep spitting inside of a tube until you fill it to the line. Damn. You can't overspit either. No, I'm talking like porn star spit. Yeah. You got to do a lot. (sighs) What happened to just swabbing? Oh, you want accurate results. Yeah. China needs our DNA. Close swab. They're definitely cloning you somewhere in a fucking. Oh, yeah. Somewhere underground in Nevada. (laughs) That's not a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need any more of you? No, I've, I have not contributed much to the world at all. Like, you should clone other people. You don't need my 23 and me spit. I do think that uh, getting snipped is a uh, cultural appropriation. Right? I don't, yeah, cultural appropriation is tough because where does it start? Where does it end? Like, if I wear a sombrero, I'm an asshole. Yeah. But if I mm. learn Spanish, I'm cool. Yeah. But isn't Spanish part of their culture? Yeah. So why is that okay? You see what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot I make of lines, a, so many lines. Yeah, if I make a taco, that's yeah. fun, but that's their culture. So you're pretty much comparing Rosetta Stone to Hitler, is what you're suggesting. I'm asking, where's if I wear cornrows, I'm a douche. Well, you would be a douche with cornrows. I would, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it just go- I would never do it. Yeah, I just don't know why And you're kind some, of a douche when you wear a sombrero. That's what I'm saying. I why? feel like Mexican people, that Mexican people don't wear sombreros. So you're just kind of a douche. Well, you haven't been to the right restaurant. Is? It's kind of right, like all right. When you get off the plane at Cabo, yes, they have on sombreros. Yeah, uh, but if you just go to Mexico, there's not people just the way Maul wears a Yankee hat. Yeah, no, that they're just walking down the street in sombreros. <laughs> Definitely right. not. Um, but the Jewish thing, what is the significance of circumcision to Jews that it would be cultural appropriation? Well, because I can see that there would be a culture with cornrows, and it has to do with history and all that. But those are all snip. visual elements. That circumcision. My dick is, is a visual. Thing. No, but like it's 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 not like we're not unless you know you're on the train or something like that. Like you're, during you're, the train, your dick yeah, isn't I'm, just out. Like that sombrero. Your dick is out on the train. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like during York, a train, your dick is out. <laughs> yeah, that's why train, it's yeah. weird. Jews don't like trains. That's <laughs> but, actually that is a fact. <laughs> but what if you wear a little sombrero on your dick? Yeah, that's okay because it's not out. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Maybe that's the the now compromise. You're, now you're just being cute. Yes, exactly. And I'll put a little mustache oh, on. So, so yeah. you get snipped. That's a Jewish thing for health benefits. And then the condom is like a little yarmulke. Oh, Ooh. Okay. I love it. Yeah. And the jizz is whitefish. Right. All right. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. <laughs> it is salty. <laughs> Pepper John is the fresh locks. There we oh, go. Um, <laughs> so the asshole is the bagel. So, this is sick. <laughs> So no one can tell me why <laughs> Jews started just snipping their dicks. And no, it's, it was we, a health it's thing. It's it was a uh, hygiene. Yeah. All right, they don't get to have health. Good point. <laughs> Wait. Good point. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you meant they cultural don't get to be appropriation. Healthy. They don't just get health. Right. But that's why it was. That's why it became a thing. Though it became a thing for health health uh, benefits. Yeah. And the Jews were just ahead of the curve. No pun intended. Mm. Uh, well, I don't know if they were ahead of it. It was but. in the the uh, Torah. So okay. they wrote maybe they maybe they, maybe they wrote it down first, but I don't know if they invented it. Okay. Now that I think about it, as my mother was our Sunday school teacher, mm. I don't ever you hear about everything with Jesus, who did what, when he was born, his mans and them that brought gifts, the donkey that was there had a name. We never heard who uh, who circumcised. Good point. The, Je- Jesus H. The moil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what did they do with the foreskin? Yeah. What do they do with the foreskin? Uh, they. Bronze? Yeah. yeah. They put it on the, the Made doorbell. a ring out of it. Yeah. <laughs> wedding rings, wedding bands. Right. That's what... <laughs> Who circumcised Jesus? That's a great question. Call in. <laughs> they, they, they buried uh, his, his whore of a wife. Uh, I guess they buried the circumcision technician. I guess Wait, so. did Jesus have a wife? Yeah, Mary Macklin. She was a whore. Wait. Was no. I thought I don't Mary think was, that was his mom. mom. That's his mom. Yeah, and, I mean, he had mommy issues, so he went after a woman named the same as his... That's, oh, really? That's not the story. <laughs> First that of all, can't be the story. Nick, I'm not. Go, yo, Google that. Yo, that not not, on, not only did I go to CCD Sunday school, everything. I watched Nicolas Cage in uh, whatever that National st- Treasure. Yeah, he, it's definitely somewhere in National <laughs> Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> or Mel Gibson told me. I don't fucking know. Uh, was that in the Last the Supper, Jewish if rant? you look at the silhouette, there yeah. is a woman, and that's his whore of a wife. Well, yeah, someone had to cook the food. <sighs> True, whores are good cooks. That is a fact. Is that right? Oh, That's for sure. I never stay. <laughs> <laughs> you should get your money's worth and get a plate. <laughs> Sorry, that was a, oh, that, that was weak. Week, that was wet. That, that was, was a wet. wet. That was the taco. <laughs> appropriating my assholes, appropriating yeah. Mexicans. <laughs> um, so, kids, you're married. Do you think you have some children? I think so. I mean, give me a couple years. Want to do a little traveling. I got to do some growing up. You know, I'm obviously still a child. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, one day I'd like to have a, a tyke. You? A what? Oh, is that a that's Jewish a, reference? No, that's a cl- <laughs> that's a lesbian reference. No, uh, <laughs> a, a toddler, a, you know, mm. rug rat. Just just for more material, right? Yeah, I feel like that's why comedians have children. Yeah, because it doesn't they're just seem running fun. out. Of, they're running out of relationship bits. I think you're right. That's part of it. <laughs> How long have you been married? <sighs> Two months. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, doing the. <laughs> Newlywed over Two here. months. Okay. He did his... Uh, I thought he was about to say a decade. Honeymoon in South Africa. Oh, yeah. Safari. How was that? Unbelievable. I'm not an animal guy. I'm not a wilderness guy. And I had a blast. So your wife is... The, she's into the animals? And- not at all. But we just said, fuck it. We've done... We've been to China. We've been to Amsterdam. We've been to France. Let's do something mm. different. So we went to... How long Seinfeld? we got together before you got married? Seven years. Okay. Yeah, six years. All right. Yeah, so y'all really did the whole relationship. Oh thing. yeah, we did every you, hole. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to do that. You got to get it out of the way. Got to do it. All right, Mark, I didn't ask for that. But okay. Oh, thanks. sorry. I'll yeah. send you a clip. Since <laughs> <laughs> we're sharing clips. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Seinfeld suggestion to do South Africa or no? Just uh, just where should we go? We did a big brainstorm sesh, and then we just said we'll just do safari. When because mm. a lot of places it sounds bad, but we'll I'll travel to because of gigs. Yeah. So mm. I did a gig in China, and she flew with me, and we went to the Great Wall and all that. But it was all centered around a gig, so she was like, "No gigs. Let's just go somewhere. We'll never go without comedy." So you I, don't think South Africa would have you? Nah, it's a jungle. <laughs> they don't have a microphone in the middle of a palm tree, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it was incredible. Animals, I mean, lions walk right by the Jeep. You see a leopard up above you in a tree. It's mm. incredible. That's kind of a metaphor for marriage, I feel like. Oh. I understand. Yeah. Um, when you got back, did things feel different after the honeymoon? Totally, totally. Like, you're like, oh, I'm a grown up. Yeah. I'm married. This is weird. She could take money from me. Yes, she will. <laughs> and just saying, like, my wife, oh, oh, that's my wife's hat. You know, it's a weird thing to say. I mm. feel like a. You know, it's like when somebody goes, hey, Mr. Johnson, you're like, that's my father's name. Yeah. That's how I feel saying wife. How do you feel about uh, her family? Great family. Normal family. My family's weird. Mm. That's why I'm a comedian, probably. Mm-hmm. But her family's normal. She wasn't molested, is what you're saying. Not at all. I oh. did that. But <laughs> it's nice to... You were channeling your inner Leo. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's nice to get her to see my family, though, because she's like, wow, they're weird. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So it's nice to have a normal person validate your weird family. Is she mm. from New York? Uh, Boston. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Irish. Uh, yes, fire crotch. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her <laughs> pussy looks like your head. Yeah. <laughs> so bald. <laughs> I don't think we needed to know oh, it's, that Mark. It's the hairline is receding. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> get some of that um, hair out of there. How, how did you meet her? A uh, comedy show. Okay. Yeah, I was at a show. She was on a date, and she didn't like the guy. And I had a good set, and then she <laughs> slid into the old DM, nice. and the rest is anal. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you turned a fan out. Yeah. There you go. You got turned that a right. Fan into a wife. Yes, eventually. Yeah. Do you remember who who the date was? Like, you know, his it, face. I didn't see him. Thank God. It was was it, was it a black guy? Is what I'm asking. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. dark out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw teeth. I think. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what was it, Pete? <laughs> no, no, no. He was also on the show. Thank God she doesn't like uh, tattoos. But uh, yeah, no. Just met her after show. We hit it off, and here we are. I like it. What about you guys? You guys married? No, no. Tried that. Smart. Work. Don't do it. Nah. Big mistake. Yeah. I'm I mean, I'm not, I, I'm I don't not, have Seinfeld either to guide me. Sure. Yeah, yeah. See, if I had Seinfeld on on the text, like just giving me the the route, the GPS, then that's different. Yeah. But I don't. I, I mean, I'm I'm not against marriage. I I do the fact that y'all were together seven years. I think that's the way. Like you got to really be with somebody. Oh, yeah. and Learn learn them and spend a lot of time with them, and then it's like, all right, this is the woman that I'm gonna be with. Oh, this totally. is the guy that I'm going to be with. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I'm an introvert. So, like, going on dates was a lot of work. Like, meeting girls after shows was easy because you meet them at a show, you go to a bar, you go to the hotel. But, like... I hear a lot of comedians say they're introverts. Is that, like, a... Oh, yeah. Is it's that a, part of it? Definitely a pattern, for sure. Most of us are introverts. Wow. Yeah. We, well, I mean, you look at comedy. People always go, you're an introvert, but you stand in front of hundreds of people. Right. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but they can't talk. Yeah. Okay. So it's perfect for comedy. I get to say all the things I think of. Yeah. You talk, you get thrown out, uh-huh. and then I go home. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. So you Has, guys are normal, though. No. No? He's normal. I wouldn't say normal, but uh, I'm not an introvert. Okay. I don't mind I don't mind uh being in front of people around people speaking. I don't I don't mind. I don't I don't like to be out being social for too long though. Mm. I can feel my social battery like draining yeah. and I'm like, all right, man, let me go back to my my own space and just be by myself or whoever else I want to be around. But I'm not a an introvert though. No. Mm. I feel Definitely. like everything about you is introverted. Really? Yeah. Why? You you're the definition of introversion, if that's a word. You don't go out. You don't like talking to well, people. That's, you don't. No, I don't. When, when, when we're out, you sit, you sit in the corner and smoke and don't, don't speak drink. to people. Uh, no, I don't, I don't go when, out and when talk we're, to When people. we're on the road, you stay in your hotel room. Oh, wow. <laughs> we just wrapped a three-month tour at the end of last year. So oh, we, we saw congrats. each other's social energy. Yeah. I see. You know that's what it is? You get to I'm, know somebody. I'm, oh, yeah. oh for sure. It, it's not that. Yeah. I'm just. This guy looks innocent. Ah. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. It's nasty. Nasty. Smell some. <laughs> yeah. Smell his thumb. I'll taste it. <laughs> That's how you got hyperventilation. Uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I gotta cut that shit. Out. That's how you got hyperventilation. <laughs> <You said> hyperventilation. <laughs> I got hypertension in the ass. Um, yeah, but you are 100 percent an introvert. I don't think I'm an introvert. I just think that I'm just older, and I'm just like I, I can't do the young shit anymore. That's not my demographic. I can't be out just for I mean, me. you wouldn't even go to dinner with us. I feel like adults do that. When? I went to dinner with you on the road. That's because we were in Seattle and there was nothing to do. Mm. I mean, what are we? In LA, you didn't go to in dinner. In Houston, with us. you disappeared. <laughs> oh, wow. Houston, Dallas. Disappeared. Wow. Disappeared. Atlanta. I don't know if you know, but he's 41. Whoa. I know. You would think I'm the 41 yeah. year old. Yeah. I'm the 32 year old. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. It's weird. Irish, man. Yeah, yeah, we don't age well. You crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Plus that you dress in the potato young. famine. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so that helps too. Yeah. But yeah, you fooled me. Yeah. How old did you think Maul was? 35? Okay. That's about it. That's nice. Yeah. I hear that a lot. And what'd you say? 48? 51. What? <laughs> 51. 51. All oh. right. Well, that's how many days he's had his green card. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating. <laughs> Good for him. Nice. Um, what do you do on the road now that you're married though? Because like when you can't fuck random people, it's you have to fill the time somehow. Yeah, I like to it's drink, weird, right? And I bring guys on the road that I I'm friends with, so we can just like go out, hang out, laugh it up, strip club, movie, whatever. So it's it's definitely different, but 
to me, the the single life it just gets you into too much trouble. You're fighting mm. with somebody. You got you're, you're spinning plates. I got yeah. you had Tinder going. You had Bumble going. You had Raya going. It was just too much. And it was consuming me. Shout out Raya. Mm-hmm. So you were big on the dating apps. Oh yeah, I mean it was oh. easy money. What was that like? I've never done outside Whoa. of Instagram. I've never done a dating app in my life. <sighs> to quote some comic, he said, "It's all easy now because you got." Tinder to meet the whores and Uber to bring the whores to you. Yeah. It's all laid out, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is It is a layup. It's a layup. And I would put me, my profile was like me and Conan, me and Fallon, me <laughs> and Kevin Hart, you know? So I was just, I was, uh, I was cleaning up, but yeah, it just became all consuming and it was like, I felt overwhelmed. Do you think that, uh, what does that say about women? I was cleaning up because I had a photo with Conan. <laughs> uh, well, hey. <laughs> That's our tits. Yeah, you know? right. Absolutely. Conan is our tits. Conan's our tits. Title of this episode, Conan's our tits. Do yes. you think that uh Conan on our tits? <laughs> how has being married uh affected your art of being a comedian? Do you think that it has kind of changed the way you think, the way you view things, um cha- affected your approach to the stage? I think it two things. One there's none of that chasing sh- women shit, so that's all free time now. Yeah. And then two it kind of makes you grow up a little. Mm-hmm. And then kids makes you grow up a lot, I hear. Mm-hmm. So marriage is like, uh, this person depends on me. I depend on her, whatever. So like, you kind of got to be uh, decent, yeah. you know? And that part's hard. Yeah. but It's hard to be a decent person. It's hard to be a decent person. Yeah. And we're, I'm a comic. We're selfish. We want what we want. We want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. So mm-hmm. it kind of makes you go, hey, hey, there's another person in your life. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's compromise. Let's think about their feelings let's be considerate so that part was kind of a wake up call but it's got to happen sometime um you said 2 months in on the marriage 20 years in would you be into an open relationship sure i'd be in in a year <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We, we've talked about it on the podcast a, a couple times i understand open relationships i don't think my ego is built for them at this point but i they make sense to me especially sure. if you're going to get married yeah. So I've thought about that. If I get married, at what point I'm gonna be like, all right, let, let's just bang everyone. Like, I just don't as a crew. Work. Let's just as a family, let's go out and fuck it everyone. Never, that's that's they rarely work. But, work I, but monogamy after ten years could not work either. Right. Right. So, but we've it's seen a mixed we, bag. We see more people be monogamous and be happy than we do see people that are like I, open to just sleeping with other people. Drastically like, disagree with you. How? If that's even a thing. Show me people that are happy that are like. Well, it's not as talked about. Like, yeah, people, not pe- people in open relationships are not like you as a vegan that tells yeah. everyone. Like, I don't people in open relationships that. are just quietly people fucking me a steak everyone. And I'm like, no, I don't eat meat. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't just offer that information. Yeah, well, stop being so loud and just eat the steak. Oh, yeah. Um, right. <laughs> but like, statistically, there's more divorces than there are people together. Like, over, I think, really? over I think 50% open, of couples, over 50% of couples end in divorce. Did uh, the CDC tell yeah, you Yeah, but we don't know if they were fucking, <laughs> if they were open couples or monogamous. We don't know that. I'm, come on by logic standards <laughs> what you mean come on shut up just cause you say come on doesn't mean I'm gonna agree with you that like. holds up in court come yeah. on <laughs> <laughs> Overruled, come on right? no that's what Johnny Cochran said about OJ uh, come on come on my Love back fit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, logically though I feel like open relationships versus long term monogamous marriages open relationship would last longer what's something that if you were to find out about your wife it would be like this relationship is absolutely over mm, good question how many blacks uh, i think i think if she was uptight you know if she was like hey your, your jokes they're a little offensive i i i think you're going a little far maybe pull back i would be like we're this can't work yeah because you know we're, we're having fun like mm-hmm. if you take any of this seriously either you're stupid or you're you're just wrong. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We're, I, we're all gonna die one day. I dated a girl who was like, "Whoa, easy, you can't," you know. And I was like, "Eh, you're dumb. Like this, you're not you're not smart. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. think you're a hero? This is a waste of time. Yeah, I'd rather live it up and be fun." And and she was a bad person, by the way. So she would kind of use this like, "Whoa, you said uh, retard. Well, you're a you, we can't hang out." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you." You don't talk to your children, but, you know. Like that's because, actually because bad. they're retarded. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they that's can't like talk. really bad. Like, yeah, yeah, like she would do really bad <laughs> shit, but then she'd be like, "Hey, you shouldn't say uh, yeah. whatever," you know. Was yeah. this a Bumble girl or? Yeah, it was just like a girl I was banging for a while, and she was yeah hot and sexy and all that, but like she was just such a 
bummer, like yeah. a buzzkill and all that, you know? So do you have anyone in your family? <laughs> you don't speak to your children. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anyone in your family like that, that checks you or gets upset with some of the stuff you no, say? No. The good thing about my family is they don't listen to anything. Like, they're not fans. Okay. Really. Mm-hmm. So it hurts. Yeah. initially because you're like ah oh, geez i don't think they give a shit but also like hey they don't give a shit it's like yeah. home alone i'm jumping on the bed yeah so <laughs> it's, a, it's a bittersweet mm-hmm. <laughs> what about you guys your family your mom listen to this i hope not yeah I yeah hope not. she my, does though like oh. she catches certain certain episodes and things like that Sorry. my mom claims she just puts it in the background to hear my voice and I'm like you're, you're oh. listening yeah she's listening my you're, mom listens definitely she's listening. definitely my mom's listening. on the reddit Oh, Damn, wow. that's, oh, that's fucking wild. dangerous. Yeah. My mom doesn't know what Reddit is. That's yeah. that's on 4chan. <laughs> Jesus, my Christ. dad, my dad is definitely in the YouTube comments because he's sent me YouTube comments before. Wow, and, he, and I have to like explain them to him because oh, if you don't understand internet language yeah like my dad's like oh we'll find these guys i'm like it's an ip address dad yeah <laughs> we'll, it's like, we'll find these guys <laughs> it's, it's, it's really not that big a deal i promise you he my called mom, you a cuck son i don't yeah. know what that is what is a cuck <laughs> my mom she uh she she does this. she still googles mm. she googles me though i'm like why why don't you just call me and see how i'm doing like right. she googled me she she googled something one time and the internet was saying that i was dating like this female rapper and she called me and it was like oh, that was why, true though why you know who Azalea banks is yeah that's his ex. That's, Whoa, that's, that's not, yeah. she's hot. That's not my yes. ex. I've jerked off to yeah. your ex. That's yeah. crazy. That's yeah. not. That's like Eskimo ex. cousins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not my Inuit. ex friend. Yeah. I know. I got friends too. Yeah, that I that fucked. You jerk off to? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> jerking off to your friends is sick. <laughs> I mean, don't think I didn't clock these two. That's, <laughs> a, uh, that's in the bank for later. <laughs> He's married. Come on, what do you yeah, expect? Yeah, I gotta do it. <laughs> Oh, uh, my, my mom Googled, you know, like the net worth shit that is so far off for everyone. At one point on the internet, it still may say that. It said my net worth was $7 million. <laughs> my mom God called me, I swear to God, like really concerned and angry. Yeah. And not to say my mom has been like a mooch or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But she was like really upset that she thought I had $7 million mm-hmm. and I had not told Just my own mother. Just in the checking account. I'm yeah. like, mom, I... You have access to my account. There's not seven million dollars in there. There's right. not one million no, she dollars. She thought you had it in, a, in, a, in an account in the Bahamas somewhere. Yeah. That's what she thought yeah. you did. We, we split the check at lunch yesterday. Yeah, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parents, they just. Uh, my mom does the same. She Google stuff, and she may hear things and see something to clip on Facebook, and you know, she calls me so concerned. But I think that's what parents are for. Mm. I guess so. Yeah, to that's keep- that's what sucks about the internet, but it's also great about the internet. Yeah. You know, they can find out about you and talk to you and read comments, but they also see you talking eat, about eating ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a good and That's the, bad. the part my mom hates. She's yeah. Like, oh, why are you eating ass? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, mom. The, the worst thing I think with parents is explaining what our career is. Yes. Yeah. I went to my uncle's funeral at the repass. It was just, I had more fun at the funeral. The repass of my mom trying to explain uh. what I did to people was the weirdest yeah, they, and then they were like pulling up their phones, like, "Oh, I just hit the, oh. the podcast." At, like, you don't, you don't need to listen to it. That's the worst. I promise you, you won't like it. And they were like trying to be like supportive family members, like, "No, I'm going to listen to it tomorrow morning." Like, you don't need to. I please don't. Please don't. Jesus, yeah, that's the worst. And they're like, "Wow, you have a podcast." You're like, anybody can start one. Anybody. It's not yeah. really an accomplishment. It's not. It's, it's really like when not. you're on YouTube. Whoa. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is the fat guy falling down the stairs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anybody's yeah. on there. Yeah. So, Mark, you have any uh, any plans? Any Netflix specials? Anything in the works? Hey, we got one taping in Chicago at the Vic Theater on March 18th. We we Woo! sold out, but we added the show on the 17th. So Congrats. Scoop that up. Congrats. Thank you. St. Patrick's Day. Is that right? In sh- March 17th. Whoa. In Chicago, too. Big, oh, my. big Irish market. Oh, those Go jump in the Green River. Yeah, yeah be, there you go. It'll there be a go. rowdy time. Get your Irish jokes ready. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Boy, those mix are going to really go mix. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We don't have much to go nuts for. <laughs> That's true. Potatoes are back. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs are costly, but potatoes are low. Now we're talking. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a pot. We might be drunk. Tuesdays with stories. Uh, check out my website for dates. Come see me live. Praise Allah. Mm. Definitely going to come see Mark live. Uh, we want to thank you for coming by, kicking with us. This was great. Had a thank great you. time with you, man. You're absolutely fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but we knew that going into it. Thank you, sir. Good what do you think you. of uh, Andrew Tate and Carlos Mencia together? <laughs> One sentence. Let's get our algorithms up. Oh, shit. Well, Tate and Greta Thunberg went at it. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> she called him out for uh, sex trafficking because, you know, she hates traffic. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> There you go. There's your algo. 
Thank you, man. Carlos will steal that. All right, man. This has been another episode of of (laughs) the new Rory and Maul podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll talk to y'all soon. Be safe. Enjoy your week. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. That was my line. (laughs) (laughs) No, Rory and Maul.